Number 10, White Rabbit. While White Rabbit hasn't done that much yet, she was recently announced as the main villain for the first arc of the new Batman and Robin book. So evidently, she must have some pretty big power to be playing a role as the main baddie there. And not just any main baddie, by the way, the first one in this story. Typically in comics, the first villain to appear also tends to help define the focus of the entire story, and often are defeated at the beginning, only to come back even bigger, badder, and stronger by the end. Not always, but you know, this is pretty common. I find when it comes to my experience reading comics, so this could be one of the scenarios that we're gonna see here. When White Rabbit first appeared, she introduced herself as the girl that got away and was established as a pretty slippery character who had the power to be in two places at once, enjoying taunting and tormenting Batman, all while actually dating Bruce Wayne, who I don't believe she actually knew was Batman, but still, that's pretty crazy. Her White Rabbit persona seems more interested in the bats, while her Jaina Hudson persona seems more interested in Bruce, which makes for an interesting dynamic when it comes to how she relates to the character of the Dark Knight, being herself kind of two different people. I mean literally two different people. And friends, before I move on to our next spot on this list, if you love when we talk about powerful female characters, be sure to go check out our most powerful playlist. Number 9, Lady Bullseye. Man. Lady Bullseye. For a female version of a male villain, she's actually surprisingly cool, I gotta say. Like her male counterpart, Lady Bullseye is also a master of accuracy, being able to hit just about any target with just about any projectile. She was actually inspired by Bullseye herself to become a villain after he incidentally, though not really intentionally, saved her at a young age. Lady Bullseye was created by the fantastic creative team of Ed Brubaker and Clay Mann, and is a more modern comic book creation, first appearing in Daredevil issue number 11 from 2008. Number Number 8. Captain Phasma. Man, I love Captain Phasma. I feel so like I was robbed of just getting all of the Captain Phasma stuff and backstories and there's so much good stuff about her. While Captain Phasma may have been shafted in the Star Wars films, I know she has some pretty great comics to her name, which are being produced over at Marvel Comics as part of their Star Wars division. Or that have been, I guess I should say. So in that regard, she definitely counts as a female comic book villain, while also happening to be a Star Wars villain as well. So just bonus. Phasma's own origin story shows how strong and determined she is as a character. Much of what we know from this story actually comes from the novel about her that was based on sort of her origin story titled Phasma. Here it's established that Phasma grew up on Parnassos, a world ravaged by nuclear calamity. Phasma helped to organize the death of her own clan, including her parents, to ensure her brother and herself survive. Even going so far as to fake a threat to his life by herself stabbing him in the foot and then pushing him down a cave. When Phasma first met with the First Order, she was enamored by their resources, their wealth, and their power, and saw in them a way to rise up herself. When her brother Keldo refused to help her in aiding the First Order, she even turned on him, killing him and leaving with a few of the best warriors to join with the dark side. That's crazy. That's crazy to me. She's just like, I'm just gonna get rid of this entire family, go do my own thing. Number seven, Storm. Also known as Aurora Monroe, we first meet Storm in Giant X-Men number one in 1975. She is a descendant of an ancient line of African priestesses who all share the same white hair, blue eyes, and magical abilities. As a child, she survived a plane crash that destroyed her home and left her with severe claustrophobia after being trapped underneath some rubble. She served with the X-Men for years, eventually becoming their leader after Cyclops' departure. In Black Panther Volume 4, Storm marries the Black Panther and becomes the Queen of Wakanda, but none of the ladies on this list are defined by their relationship to a man. Storm is classified as an Omega level mutant, wielding mystical power drawn from her ancestors. She has the psionic ability to manipulate weather, from adjusting atmospheric pressure to creating a cooling mist on a hot day. She also boasts telepathic resistance, energy vision, teleportation, and limitless magical potential thanks to her bloodline. She is also multilingual and an expert gardener. Number 6, Wonder Woman. First appearing in All-Star Comics number 8 in 1941, Wonder Woman is easily one of the most recognizable female heroes and has been around since the beginning. Also known as Princess Diana, she was born on Paradise Island, the first child ever born there. She has some classic superhero equipment including indestructible bracelets, the lasso of truth, the royal tiara, and an invisible airplane. She is a founding member of the Justice League and has an impressive selection of powers including superhuman strength, speed, durability, and flight. Number 5, Jean Grey. Also known as Marvel Girl, Jean Grey is one of Marvel's most complex heroes and first appeared in X-Men number 1 in 1963. She witnessed the death of a young friend at age 10 and experienced her dying friend's thoughts and emotions, the tragedy activating her latent telepathic abilities. Professor X takes her under his wing and places 
psychic barriers in Jean's mind to protect her while she develops her powers. Jean goes on to bond with the ancient Phoenix Force and has an epic and expansive history with some of the X-Men's most compelling storylines ever. Jean goes from telekinesis rookie to super powered pro throughout her story arc with powers including memory alteration, mind control, mind possession, telepathic defense, psychic healing, astral protection, force fields and more. Number 4 Captain Marvel First appearing in Marvel Super Heroes number 13 in 1968, Carol Danvers joined the Air Force when she turned 18, quickly rising to the top of her class. After 10 years of killing it in the Air Force, she was appointed to Chief of Security for NASA. Her father was a Navy man and her mother was a captain of the Cree Army named Mary L. Growing up, Carol was unaware that she was a human Cree hybrid. One day, she's kidnapped and taken out to an abandoned Cree outpost where she's knocked into a damaged Kree machine called the Psyche Magnetron during a scuffle and the machine leaves her genetic structure forever altered. She becomes a split personality hero, experiencing blackouts during which she becomes Miss Marvel with powers of super strength, flight and a seventh sense giving her premonitions. The two personalities eventually are consolidated and she becomes her true self, an incredibly powerful member of Marvel's unique roster of heroes. Her powers include superhuman stamina, reflexes, energy absorption, and even self-sustenance. She also has a healing factor that would put Wolverine to shame. She basically doesn't age and is seemingly immortal. Number 3. Supergirl Supergirl first appeared in Action Comics number 252 in 1959 and is known on Krypton as Kara Zor-El. She was sent to Earth by her father to save her life, like Superman. In the beginning, her arrival is confusing for Superman, who can't believe his eyes when he first sees a woman flying. She is, however, one of the most powerful heroes in the world and has been a member of the Justice League and the Red Lantern Corps. Supergirl is host to some epic larger-than-life storylines and has always been a fan favorite. Her powers include enhanced vision, including infrared, microscopic and x-ray vision, invulnerability, and all the usual superhuman stuff, and some extras including flight, sound manipulation, force fields, and genius level intellect. It's been said that she sometimes seems more powerful than the Man of Steel himself. Number 2. Scarlet Witch First appearing in X-Men number 4 in 1964, Wanda Maximoff was kidnapped as a child and experimented on. She once accidentally set a village on fire with her powers and was attacked by the angry villagers, one of whom called her a Scarlet Witch, and the name stuck. She was rescued from this situation by Magneto and recruited into his brotherhood of evil mutants. Destined to become a hero, she disagreed with Magneto's plan to kill the X-Men and eventually became an Avenger alongside Captain America and Hawkeye. She has the uncanny ability to generate hex bolts or hex spheres, manipulating energy fields to cause anything from momentum changes, molecular destabilization, force fields, or just deflecting attacks. Her hexes are especially useful in causing negative effects in the form of bad luck. Other powers include flight, teleportation, and powerful energy blasts. It's been said that Wanda is the nexus being of the Marvel Prime Universe, and it's that type of larger than life history that puts her near the top of this list. Okay Nerd Squad, before we reveal our pick for number one, take a second to smash that like button. But seriously, just click on it once. Number one. Rogue. Also known as Anna Marie LeBeau, Rogue was first seen in Avengers Annual number 10 in 1981. She was born in a hippie commune in Mississippi. Her mother died when she was young and this led to her becoming rebellious, running away from home and earning the nickname Rogue. In her youth, she develops a relationship with a boy named Cody, but after her first kiss, her mutant powers kick in, absorbing Cody's life force from the skin to skin contact and leaving him in a coma. She's unable to control this power at first and resolves to always wear body concealing clothing to prevent skin contact. She is later recruited into the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants by Mystique and in an intense battle against the X-Men, she absorbs the abilities and memories of Miss Marvel. Eventually, she begins to suffer from having Carol Danvers' memories inside her head and she turns to Professor X for help. Over time, she earns the trust of the other members of the X-Men and becomes a valued member of the team. Rogue has the ability to absorb superpowers and memories of pretty much any being she comes into contact with. The transfer is usually temporary, lasting an amount of time relative to the duration of the skin contact, but in some cases her power absorption is permanent, perhaps due to absorbing Miss Marvel's unique half Kree DNA. In any case, it's this ability to absorb the powers and abilities of other beings that lands her at the number one spot on our list. Number 10. Amanda Waller. She doesn't even have superpowers, but she is a power all on her own 
Nicknamed The Wall, she is a government official who will do anything in the name of national security. I'm talking breaking the rules, killing people, even killing innocent people. She is the commander of Task Force X, aka Suicide Squad, a supervillain team that performs special operations under her command. She has a brilliant tactical mind and is ruthless and disciplined, bending supervillains to her will to get her work done, but she's not afraid to get her hands dirty. She once even uncovered Batman's secret identity. She might not be the deadliest DC villain by a pretty wide margin, but there are a whole host of DC villains that would say she's plenty deadly. It's this ability to get superpowered villains to do her dirty work that earns her this spot on our list. Number nine, Catwoman. Coming straight from the heart of Gotham City, Selina Kyle has had a varied origin, but she always ends up becoming Catwoman. In more recent years, she shows up more as a helper to Batman than as an enemy, but she is one of Batman's original villains, and for good reason. She is in peak physical condition, and a nimble acrobat as well as master thief, sometimes even using literal cats to help her in her schemes. She might not have super strength or energy manipulation, but she is still a deadly foe. A skilled martial artist, stealth expert, and has considerable skill with weapons, including firearms and swords. Number eight, Cheetah. A much more intimidating cat, Cheetah has had a bit of a legacy and there are a few different versions of the character. The most recent iteration of Cheetah is Barbara Minerva, who just recently appeared in DC's Wonder Woman 1984. A skilled archeologist and linguist, she has a keen interest in the lost culture of the Amazons and she actually helped Wonder Woman learn English when she first came to the United States. Dr. Minerva has made a pact with a god, transforming her into the cheetah with superhuman speed and all the deadly attributes of a feline. She battles with the inner turmoil of resisting her animalistic rage and predatory fury, and was once friends with Wonder Woman, at least in her human form. She was once busted out of jail by the crime syndicate and recruited onto their team. After a while, she led her own team known as the Menagerie, who terrorized New York from their hideout in Central Park. Number seven, SP slash slash DR, or as I like to say, Spider. Spider, AKA Penny Parker. You might recognize Penny from the first Into the Spider-Verse film. She was introduced there as a young girl who inherited her father's spider-like mech suit, SP slash slash DR, Spider, after he died. As the suit was made based on her father's genetics, it was believed that Penny was the only one to carry on his work with the mech. She allowed the radioactive spider connected to the suit's CPU to bite her so that she could bond with and control the suit alongside it. Penny was created by Jerome Gerard Way and Jake Wyatt, and made her first appearance in 2014 in Edge of the Spider Verse issue number 5, before showing up in the film four years later in 2018. Number 6, Spider Man. Spider Man has to be one of my favorite all time alternate characters in the history of Marvel. I just love that she became a full fledged hero in her own right, and that she helped to defeat the inheritors the second time around while also deciding to raise all of the then made baby versions of them. If anyone could make sure they grow up to be good and kind instead of murderous spider totem devouring villains, it's Aunt May. Spider-Man hails from Earth 3123 and comes from What If issue number 23, originally, where we asked the question what would happen if Aunt May had been bitten by a radioactive spider in the place of her nephew, Peter Parker. And to be clear, that is What If issue 23 from the 1977 series. Not 89, if you're looking for it. Number five, Venom. Not that Venom from Earth 616, this Venom from Earth X, aka Earth 9997. This version of Venom and alternate spider person is May Parker, the daughter of Mary Jane Watson Parker and Peter Parker. There is much we do not know about May's origins, but we do know that in her youth she was trained likely by the hero Daredevil, aka her uncle Matt, in the use of her spider sense in combat. Her relationship with her father was made more complicated when Venom left its aged host, Eddie Brock, and sought out May to try and use her as a weapon of revenge against Peter Parker, still holding a grudge against Spider-Man for rejecting the symbiote years ago. Venom was like, I remember all these grudges, I don't let them go. Fortunately, May's willpower was so strong that she was able to bend the symbiote to her will, allowing her to take control of it and use it for her own heroic means, instead of it corrupting her. Number four, Madam Web. Julia Carpenter has been 
been known by a few different spider centric names over the years when it comes to her heroics. Initially we knew her as Spider Woman, but she would later take up the mantle of Arachne before becoming Madame Web, and receiving the precognitive and telepathic abilities of Cassandra Webb as she passed away. Julia Carpenter originally got her spider like abilities when she was unknowingly experimented on. She had volunteered to be part of what she thought was a medical athletic based study. However, in reality, the government was really experimenting on her to try and create their own superhero. Julia Carpenter also has a daughter named Rachel, though we haven't really seen her for a while in the comics. I hope she's doing okay. Number three, Spider Woman. Thank goodness not everyone on this list is known as Spider Woman, because that would make it a really confusing. <laughs> Though this hero is someone that you would probably still associate with the name Spider Girl, as it was a mantle she had for many years in the comics. However, May Parker, the daughter of Mary Jane Watson Parker, and Peter Parker from Earth 982, is all grown up now, hence her taking on the mantle of Spider Woman instead. May, nicknamed Mayday Parker, is the first child of MJ and Peter, but also has a clone named April. April Parker, who joined the family as a stand in cousin, and May also has a younger brother known as Ben. I always wondered if Peter just comes up with all the names for their kids or what's going on there. I have to assume though that MJ must just really be on board with naming her kids after Peter's aunt and uncle, as in almost all alternate realities. That's what ends up happening. I don't even know. Does MJ just not want to name people after her family? I guess her family history is pretty like weird and dramatic, so maybe that's why. She has mixed feelings about her family members. Number two, Ghost Spider. While Gwen Stacy might be dead and gone in the reality of Earth 616, on the reality of Earth 65, she was the one who received spider like abilities, while her good friend Peter Parker was the one to die, becoming the reluctant villain known as the Lizard before being killed. Peter had looked up to Spider Woman as she was. Was originally known when she first came on the scene. He wanted to be a hero like her, but instead ended up as a monstrous creature, oh no, becoming the lizard after experimenting on himself. Gwen of Earth 65 has been known as Spider Woman, Venom, Spider Gwen, and more recently took up the mantle of Ghost Spider in the comics. Number one, Spider Woman. One of my all time favorite spider heroes. And also, yes, the second Spider Woman on this list. But hey, a lot of people go under the mantle Spider Woman, as I said. Jessica Drew has a super weird and kind of complicated story when it comes to her origins, especially as time has gone on and we've learned more about it. But I don't know if we consider it weirder than her original origins, which was that she was a woman who used to be a spider. That's a pretty weird story. I am gonna say it's almost at that level though, with there being secret plots seemingly behind all of what went on with her birth and her childhood, and her being experimented on as a child. However, when her origins was shifted initially to her being a sick child who was saved with a serum based off of spider DNA, it was a lot less twisty and bizarre. It's actually almost kinda nice. Ugh, I don't know though, it's pretty weird, still pretty weird. Uh, all of her origins are weird. Especially as she did still spend pretty much all of her childhood inside a stasis tube, in essence skipping all of those developmental stages and then emerging as a fully grown, naive and super powered adult later on in her life. Fully cured but now having spider like powers. Basically like a child who just fast forwarded to an adult but then you didn't actually get to experience a childhood, so what would that be like? I feel like you'd be, you'd be kind of messed up from that. Jessica has been a member of the Avengers, a pal of Wolverines, and has fought alongside her fellow spider alternates from the Spider-Verse. All around, she's just a cool lady. Number 10, Sapphire Styx. Sapphire Styx was a mutant villain powerful enough to turn Wolverine unconscious with her life-threatening powers. Her abilities allow her to steal the energy and life force of those she makes physical contact with, typically through kissing them. Kind of like Rogue, but without the power and memory absorption, and if she leaned in into the harmful elements of her powers a little more. Sapphire did just that. And it is implied that she has been able to stay healthy and young for hundreds of years using her mutant ability. I love when we have like mutant vampirism. I love those powers. It's also believed she is powerful enough that she could use her mutant ability to kill her victims depending on her target's power level and resistance of course. In the end, she was defeated and killed by Psylocke who used her powers to avenge all the souls that Sapphire had ever drained, shattering her. Psylocke 
then use Sapphire's soul energy to rebuild her own body, becoming Betsy once more. Number 9. Knockout Knockout has only made a few appearances in the comics since her first appearance in the 90s, but she is still a pretty deadly female villain and is super badass. She has worked within both the villainous supergroup of the Femizons and the Femme Fatales. More recently, she was seen once again fighting alongside the Femme Fatales. Knockout is a mutant whose powers are enhanced strength, endurance, and durability. She's a skilled enough fighter that she was able to make quick work of Mutant Rogue when she faced her briefly in Hunt for Wolverine, Mystery, and Madripoor. Number 8. Lady Mastermind We could talk about both for this point, but I've decided to focus on Reagan Wingard, who popped up in Dawn of X, as opposed to Martinique, who is also the daughter of Jason Wingard, aka Mastermind. Mastermind OG. Even when it seems like Reagan has not been strong enough when it comes to her mutant powers to achieve the desired effect on her victims, she has proven skilled and resourceful enough to find a way to push through any mental blocks or willpower that those she targets possess. Her mutant powers allow her to create realistic illusions that in fact can even trick your body into responding to them as if they were real, meaning that her illusions can actually kill you. Yikes. Unlike her father, her powers also do not require her full and devout concentration to work. Lady Mastermind's illusions will persevere even if she goes unconscious. She's pretty powerful. She's basically like way more powerful than her dad. Number seven, Hela. Hela is the ruler of the Norse and Asgardian underworld. While in the MCU, we know her as Loki and Thor's mysterious sister, who was locked away in punishment for her continuous pursuit of war against Odin's wishes after he ultimately decided to kind of usher in an era of peace. In the comics' main continuity of Earth 616, she is not Thor's sister, but instead, she's his niece. That's right, the Hela of Earth 616 is is believed to be one of Loki's children, his daughter. She ended up becoming the ruler of the underworld as was decreed by Odin. Though just because she isn't a shunned sister who seeks revenge on Asgard doesn't mean that she isn't a villain and doesn't mean that she doesn't sometimes try to seek revenge on Asgard. Even on Earth 616, Hela is known for her generally villainous intentions and there was even a prophecy when she was born warning that she would be a great danger to the other gods and goddesses of Asgard. Number 6. Enchantress Amora the Enchantress is one of the most powerful magic users in the Marvel Universe, and also happens to be a goddess within the realm of Asgard. She has been known by many names other than Amora, including Adun and Aduna, but what she has symbolized has always remained the same. Enchantress is meant to be the symbol of the perfect female form, known for her beauty and charm, which allows her to bend others, especially men, to her will. It is because of her beauty that Enchantress was deemed the only one to pick the golden apples from you. Yggdrasil. Although her backstory and origin are steeped in lore and Norse mythology, in the comics most people know her mainly as a villainess, who often goes up against the hero Thor, among others. Number 5. Aegis Aegis is one of the Proemiel gods who are known for being the oldest in the cosmos. They are believed to have come into existence right after the first Big Bang and were possibly the first entities that existed after that. Although, to be honest with you, with gods and goddesses, it seems like a lot of groups claim to be the oldest or the first. Aegis was one member of the Promiel Pantheon to become corrupted, seeking new purpose after she was no longer needed. Attempting to rise up with her fellow rebellious gods, she ended up imprisoned along with her peers by Galactus, and she remained there for many years, although she would eventually escape and would later perish. Her power was said to rival that of Galactus and his heralds combined. That's pretty powerful. Number four. Phoenix. One of the most powerful entities in the cosmos is the Phoenix Force. While the Phoenix doesn't always take a female host, I would say that many of the Force's hosts have been female, especially if we're focusing on the more notable ones. Currently in the comics, the Phoenix Force is bonded to Echo, aka hero Maya Lopez, but its most well-known host is probably that of Marvel Girl, aka classic X-Men teammate Jean Grey. You might not think of Phoenix as a god either, but the entity has been worshipped both by some on planet Earth in the past and by the Shi'ar at one point. Number three, Celestial Madonna. Celestials are known for being all powerful and almost impossible to defeat or fight against. We got our first taste of just how giant.
ginormous and seemingly unstoppable they can be in Eternals when the team of heroes decided to stand together to prevent the Celestials from destroying Earth, which they had decided to defend as their home. Most Celestials tend to skew male or simply could be considered to be without gender, but Celestial Madonna is unique as she is one of the few featured Celestials to actually have a seemingly female form. Celestial Madonna has only appeared in a few issues, but she is a Celestial, so we can imagine that she must be one of the most powerful probably female gods or goddesses around in the Marvel Universe because Celestials. Number 2, Gaia. Gaia is literally known as Mother Earth in the Marvel Universe. She made her first appearance back in the 1970s in the 1974 series of Doctor Strange, in issue number 6. Back then she was introduced as Mother Nature but would later become known as Gaia. Gaia is believed to be one of the oldest goddesses on the planet Earth and is related to the god of chaos, Cthon, who is also known for his ties to Avengers Scarlet Witch in the comics. Gaia belongs to the family of Elder Gods and like many on this list is going to be kind of hard to rank because she's pretty much maxed in almost all stats, considering that she is an extremely ancient being and entity. Basically, I feel like with this list, it's really hard to put them in any order because you're like, I mean, they're all, they're all pretty powerful. So yeah, you can let me know if you have a different order for the ones that I have here based on what you've read in the comics about them. Number one, Death. Death is an entity we are familiar with in a few different forms, but for this point, I'm going to be focusing on the version that Thanos is typically seen pining after, which is honestly typically typically the version we associate with Death when we're talking about her in the Marvel Universe. Sometimes referred to as Mistress Death, she made her first appearance in Marvel Mystery Comics issue number 21 back in the 1940s! So not only is she old and ancient in the world of the Marvel Universe, but also within Marvel Comics history as well. Number 10, Stained Glass Scarlet. Stained Glass Scarlet is a young god who came into existence following her own death. That is, following the death of her mortal self, Scarlet Fascinera. Scarlet had a tragic and rough life, filled with mistreatment by the men who she would have likely expected to trust the most. After her death in the same church where both her son and her husband also lost their lives, her story spread, gaining power. This power allowed Scarlet to return as a young goddess who is connected to Moon Knight, seemingly immortal and possesses the ability to control glass. Number 9, Storm. While Storm might not be a god in the traditional sense, she was worshipped as a weather goddess for quite a while because of her abilities. And considering how powerful she is and how much we all love her, I think we would all agree that she has more than earned her goddess status. When it comes to Storm's power levels, we have seen them spike to the point that the whole world was affected by her weather manipulation abilities. At the same time that this happened, as a reaction to her then claustrophobia, her power was also likened to that of the Phoenix, partially because it was so awesome and partially because it was so volatile. Over the years, Storm has gained more and more control over her powers and also healed from the trauma that caused her claustrophobia, meaning that she is pretty much in full control now. And she proved more recently in the comics during her battle against Tarn the Uncaring that she also doesn't need her mutant powers to be a deadly badass. Also, I feel like she's definitely in control of the ability to just manipulate weather on a planetary level because we've seen her do that with Mars. At least I'm pretty sure she's done that on Mars. So yeah, there's also that. And friends, if you are loving this list and you would love to see some more lists where we get to pump up some of the most powerful ladies in Marvel Comics or DC Comics or Indie Comics or all of the above, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Hera. Hera is a member of the Pantheon of Olympus. She is a Greek goddess who traditionally is associated in Greek mythology and belief with motherhood, family, childbirth, and marriage. In Marvel, she is likewise the wife of Zeus, but more recently in the comics, her and and the other Olympians took a turn to become powerful villains. They were killed by the vengeful goddess Nyx and later returned as tyrannical and greedy gods who raised planets with a vengeance. In the end, they were defeated by the Guardians of the Galaxy, lost as Star-Lord was lost on the other side of reality. Eventually though, Star-Lord learned the Dark Olympians had escaped due to him using his elemental gun, where their power had been trapped and stored. They returned with him back to Earth and were more permanently defeated, at least so it seems, when they were seemingly killed by the Guardians, Hera included. She was squashed in the end by Groot. R.I.P. Hera. Number 7, Hera. Hera isn't just a woman, she's also a goddess, one of the most powerful of the female goddesses of the Greek pantheon. Hera in Wonder Woman Historia of the Amazons, which tells the tale of how the Amazons came to be, is seen as the goddess who kind of like rules over all of the others. Like, 
not explicitly, but she definitely influences them a lot. She's the one that calls the shots. She is the one who typically commands them. And although she did not choose to aid them in creating the Amazons, she sneakily sent them some aid in her own way in the form of their to-be queen, the human woman Hippolyta, who would actually rise to become an Amazon. She is Zeus's wife, but despite her position as his partner, she's one of the few women in Greek mythology who would dare to trick him, spurn him, or even sometimes fight against him. Also, if you haven't read Wonder Woman Historia, the Amazons, you should go read it. It's really pretty. It's really Really great. I need to get like a tattoo somewhere from issue one, I feel like, that is from that book because it's just so stunning. Number six, Supergirl. Hera might be a goddess, and Supergirl, you know, doesn't have that title, but she kind of may as well have it. Supergirl is a Kryptonian known often for being Superman's cousin. In fact, originally, Karazorel was his older cousin who was sent after him in order to protect him. However, she kind of got stuck in like the Earth's orbit, and her arrival on Earth was delayed. Pre her arrival, during the time when she was still in stasis, barely aging, Superman arrived on Earth and basically grew up. By the time that Kara Zor El did land, Kal El had aged to be older than her. So she's older in terms of like her technical like birth date, if I guess if she had a Kryptonian like birth certificate or license, but younger in terms of her experience living and you know her physical appearance. I didn't talk about her powers at all, but you guys all know who Supergirl is. She is super strong. You know, Superman. He's really strong. Supergirl, also really strong. I more wanted to just talk about how she's younger, I guess. But also older. It's a weird, fun thing. Number five, Hecate. One of the most powerful women in the DC universe is Hecate, the goddess of witchcraft. While she belongs to the Greek pantheon, in truth, Hecate is a goddess who is much more powerful and older than any group of gods around. We actually learned during the Witching Hour event that she, in fact, was asked to join the Greek pantheon and actually chose to accept that offer. She represents the power of magic and in many ways the magic of the world and possibly of the universe is tied to her. Although she can be killed, it takes a lot of power to defeat Hecate. And even after her seeming demise, as the other kind pretty much like tore her apart, her power lived on in Circe, who had plotted for a way to basically take all of Hecate's power for herself, as she was one of the five witch marked. And after being the only one remaining, she basically became the sole possessor of Hecate's power. Number four, Naomi. Naomi is probably one of the most powerful of the newer heroes that we've seen in the DC Universe. Her powers are on the level of heavy hitters such as Superman. In fact, while transformed into her superhero mode, Naomi's power set is pretty similar, except for one very important and unique element of her powers. Unlike Superman, whose weakness is magic, Naomi actually bolsters and boosts magic around her. Her powers allow her to generate energy, which she can use in a few different ways. In combat, using it to blast opponents, or to give her a physical boost, Alternatively, she can use that same energy to boost magic and magical beings around her, which is pretty neat. However, as Naomi is still young, despite her potential, she still has some learning to do when it comes to her power set and how to best utilize and control it. Which is the only reason why she ranks so low. I feel like Naomi with time could be somewhere right near the top of this list. She's pretty nuts. I love it. Number three, Cersei. While Hecate and Hera are both goddesses, at one point, Cersei is even more powerful than both of them after she takes within herself all of Hecate's power, which allows her to tap into the source of magic. Even without being able to tap into the source of magic, though, Cersei is known for being a fearsome and powerful witch who can easily defeat many of those who would stand against her. Cersei can shapeshift, teleport, possess others, manipulate time, and is considered to be immortal. Despite her youthful appearance, Cersei is actually more than a thousand years old. Number two, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, despite having to face Cersei and sometimes seemingly being um, slightly bested by her, always ends up coming out on top in the end. At least in main continuity. And at least usually. And so for that reason, I think it makes sense that she takes one of our top spots, especially above one of her most iconic and most powerful foes. Wonder Woman in recent years has also ascended to a temporary cosmic level of godhood, on top of already being a demi goddess as the daughter of Zeus and Hippolyta in prime continuity. Anyways, as a result of her origin, Wonder Woman has divine superhuman abilities, making her super fast, strong, dexterous, and durable, on top of all the other awesome stuff that she can do, like lead an army as a master tactician and communicate with animals. 
Wonder Woman. She can do it all. What can't she do? Number one, Raven. Raven is one of the most powerful women in the DC universe. In fact, she is so powerful that she actually has to rein in her power in order to keep the rest of the world safe. That is why she often seems so detached. It's because her power is directly linked up to her emotional responses. To get too swept up in emotion would mean a loss of control over her powers, which could potentially result in a darker side taking hold of her. We've seen what happens when this takes place, and it gives us one of Raven's most powerful forms. Although when she manages to evolve from darkness back to light, she could actually become even more powerful. As we see in the New Earth continuity, after she turns evil, attacks Starfire in Nightwing's wedding, and then later on is killed, but in dying, actually becomes free of her evil demonic father, Trigon's influence. With him defeated, she is free to rise again, purified of his corruption. And she gets a cool white cape, so that's bonus, you know? Who doesn't want a cool white cape? I love capes. I should be wearing a cape right now. Number 10. Big Barda. From a young age, Big Barda was trained to become a warrior. Not just any warrior either. Barda became the leader of the Female Furies, Darkseid's personal guard. Although she was originally working for the Dark Side in the comics, get it? Dark side. She later turned things around and ended up joining the Justice League International, as well as Oracle slash Batwoman's Birds of Prey. In fact, she was probably the strongest physically on the Birds of Prey team. Belonging to the New Gods race also gives her a slew of abilities, including invulnerability, super sight, super stamina, immortality, super strength, and energy manipulation, among others. Number 9, X23. If you thought Wolverine was strong, wait till you meet his daughter. Slash Clone. More animalistic than Wolverine, X-23 was created in a lab. She is tough as nails and a survivalist above all else. Beyond the comics, we also got to see a badass live action version of X-23 on the silver screen in Logan. Especially when playing against the much older version of Wolverine, she looks even more insanely strong. Her healing factor is speedier and she never flinches at a fight, even when faced with dangerous odds. Number 8. Hela Hela is, as she sounds, the ruler of Hell. As guardian Hell, anyways. She is implied to be the daughter of Loki in the comics, though in the MCU her origins were changed to make her the firstborn secret daughter of Odin, who was imprisoned for being such a big lover of death and war after her dad decided it was basically time to make peace with the other realms instead. It's also believed that Hela is actually part giantess as well, which means that she is generally depicted as being quite tall and imposing, even without her awesome headpiece, or without her magical abilities. She's also an interesting villain of the Marvel Universe as she sometimes works against Thor and at other times actually plays the role of ally and partner to him. Hela more recently in the comics was teaming up with Thanos, whom she was trying to win the favor of, and the two of them were also kind of like an item in the comics. Number 7, She-Hulk. She-Hulk is one of the strongest there is in the Marvel Universe. She is Jennifer Walters, cousin to Bruce Banner, who found herself able to transform into a jade giantess following an emergency blood transfusion that she received from her cousin. Jennifer specialized in criminal law and ended up being targeted as a result, shot in her driveway. Bruce managed to rig up a blood transfusion by breaking into a doctor's office. Jennifer now specializes as well in superhuman cases, often representing various heroes from the superhuman community. While she is powerful just even as a lawyer, she is also exceptionally strong as a hero in her own right. At one point she was blasted with so much gamma radiation that she was even considered to be potentially strong stronger than her cousin for a time. While Jen has turned grey in the past and has also become a massive green behemoth, she is now back in a more classic form, resembling her early appearances when it comes to her look as She-Hulk. Number 6. Captain Marvel Captain Marvel is Carol Danvers. Originally Carol Danvers worked as Chief of State for NASA. It was there that she would meet the Kree-born hero Captain Marvel, who was posing as a human scientist. When she ended up being saved by Marvel when the Psyche Magnetron exploded, their DNA was was combined, due to Carol wishing to be like him, and she in her own right became a hero. Although we'd later learned that Carol herself was also part Cree, as her mother was actually Mari L, a Cree woman. In fact, Carol even has a Cree half sister, L'Oreal. Carol would become Miss Marvel, a hero with super strength, durability, the ability to fly, capable of interstellar travel, and who had energy powers similar to Marvel. Eventually, she would take up the name of Captain Marvel in honor of her deceased mentor, the hero Marvel. Number 5, Spectrum. Spectrum is probably one of the most powerful female heroes that we have over at Marvel Comics. She 
served as a lieutenant in the New Orleans Harbor Patrol and while on the job came into contact with an experimental and criminal device that left her forever changed. The exposure left her with superpowers that allowed her to change form into basically any type of energy, which is pretty insane. Monica Rambeau would go on to join the Avengers and even for a short time act as the team's leader. Monica has had many different names over the years, including Captain Marvel. In fact, she took up the mantle of Captain Marvel before Carol did, but ended up surrendering it to the original Marvel son so that he could use it. And then later on, of course, Carol would end up getting it. We've also known her as Photon, but currently she goes by Spectrum. Honestly, I really like the name Spectrum. I feel like it makes sense because it's like, you know, she's got all the energies. It's a Spectrum. Get it? I, I like it. Number four, Storm. Storm is one of the most powerful mutants around when it comes to the world of the X-Men. She is considered an Omega level mutant, which means that of those with a similar power set, she is considered the most skilled, capable, and powerful. Storm's abilities allow her to control the weather, not just creating storms, but being a master of all different elements within the spectrum of weather. Beyond that though, Storm is also a powerful person. Aurora Monroe is an amazingly skilled and deadly fighter who you probably wouldn't even want to face even if she wasn't using her powers. Aside from that, Storm is also an inspirational and motivational leader. She recently served on Captain Kate Pride's team of marauders, mainly because she wanted to keep a close eye on her friend and once protege, Kitty, but has now moved on to become the ruler and regent of planet Araco, formerly Mars, its own primarily mutant inhabited planet, as she should be. Storm is definitely one of those people that was like born to be like a leader and a ruler. And fun fact, Storm is also a goddess as well, so basically she, she's got all the things. She can do it all. Number three, Jean Grey. Jean Grey usually takes our top spot when it comes to our most powerful lists, but I think on a list like this, spot three isn't too bad. Typically, her power gains respect amongst comic book fans because she is considered the host of the Phoenix Force. Although it should be noted that right now in the comics, Jean is not Phoenix. Maya Lopez, AKA Echo is. Jean Grey, however, is still one of the most iconic heroes to have been bonded with the Phoenix Force. She has both been a powerful force of good and a force of evil when merged with it, either being known as Phoenix or Dark Phoenix. Even without the Phoenix Force though, Jean is considered to be an Omega level mutant in regards to her telepathic skills, and an extremely capable and gifted telekinetic as well. Possibly one of the most powerful psionic mutants on the planet Earth, and perhaps even within the universe or the multiverse. Number 2, Nemesis. Nemesis is a pretty cool and niche character who has only made a few appearances in the comics. She was said to have been the first being in all of existence. She made the first beings out of a piece of herself, but finding them kind of evil and pretty much displeased with them, she decided to destroy them. Choosing to end her existence due to her loneliness, Nemesis ceased to be, using her own self to create both reality and the infinity gems. She came back into being once more when the gems were brought together again. They merged along with Loki the trickster god and Circe of the Eternals who both had brought the final gems together to recreate Nemesis. Number 1, Lady Death. Lady Death is one of the most powerful forces in all of Marvel. I mean, what could be more powerful than that which comes for all of us? The inevitable death. Lady Death is the physical embodiment of death and indeed she represents that area of the cycle of life. As death, she basically rules over all living things, which in turn will die. Lady Death in the comics is known for being the love interest of Thanos, who apparently does a whole lot of killing just to try and like turn her head, hoping to win her favor. But there are also others out there who idolize death as well, such as Deadpool, who even at one point was considered so beloved by her that Thanos cursed him so that Wade could never die, thereby preventing him from ever getting to be with death. Sad. <laughs> Starting us off in at number 10, Hope Summers. Hope is the adoptive daughter of Cable, a character who first debuted in 2007 in X-Men issue 205. She was the first mutant born after the events of House of M and Decimation. Now because of this, she had a big old target on her little baby back, because she was a baby then, with Cable saving her, claiming that she was a messiah destined to save both mutant and humankind. Now Hope is capable of something called superpower manipulation. This means she can mimic other powers, act activate the powers of others, and enhance powers. Plus, she's an Omega-level mutant to boot. She got a major power upgrade during the Avengers vs. X-Men story arc when the character was bonded with the Phoenix Force, which gave her immortality. Up next, number 9, Mistress Love. Let's move on to a Marvel character cut from a very different cloth, a god. We're talking about Mistress Love, who debuted back in 1982's Defenders issue 107. 
The character is the physical embodiment of love, much like how Mistress Death is the physical embodiment of death. While we've never seen the full extent of her powers, this abstract entity is one of the universe's most powerful, and she can control emotions related to love with any being, even on a universal scale. Her powers are said to be stronger than Galactus or Odin, but not as strong as Eternity or Infinity. Also, fun fact, her gender and appearance are mutable, meaning she can also be depicted as a man. She often reflects the desires of those who see her. Number 8. Carol Danvers, aka Captain Marvel. Introduced to the MCU, Carol Danvers was set up to be the strongest Avenger yet. And while this is debatable, one cannot deny the strength of Captain Marvel, formerly known in the comics as Miss Marvel. Carol has flight capabilities, super strength, can fire photonic blasts, and comes with a no nonsense attitude. I would even argue she is presented as having a more militaristic mindset than Cap at times. In the past few years, the comics have uplifted her character, promoting her from Miss to Captain, and allowing her to earn that title easily defeating one of her arch nemeses, Jan Rog, after being reintroduced. A man who she has struggled to defeat in the past and has tortured her for most of her life. Oh yeah, and she manages to do it with a tumor rapidly growing inside her brain. Wow. I've been fighting with one arm tied behind my back. But what happens when I'm finally set free? Number 7. She-Hulk Not only is She-Hulk, cousin of Bruce Banner, strong, but she is brave and intelligent. Jennifer Walters was not the most confident person until she got caught in the crossfire of some bullets that were meant for Bruce and had to receive an emergency blood transfusion from him. His blood coursing through her veins, Jennifer underwent a transformation and became the bold and confident She-Hulk. Although she only received a portion of the strength that the Hulk has, she has a uniqueness to her that none of the other Hulks have. Her strength never leaves her. It carries over. It's consistent. Not only this, but Jennifer has an emotional influence over the Hulk, often being called in to calm down the Hulk when he is too riled up to calm himself down. Number 6. Zatanna If the powers of magic are limitless, then so must be this superhero's strength level. Zatanna may not be the most buff of the ladies on this list, but she is definitely one of the strongest when it comes to ability. Not only is she a skilled stage magician, but also a skilled real world magician, coming from a long, strong bloodline of magics. Her powers are on another level. She can travel through dimensions, is a skilled hypnotist, can transmute atoms, teleport, and has telepathic abilities. She's one of Batman's oldest friends and often helps out the Justice League. In fact, she was even once referred to as the strongest member of the Justice League. You could argue that she is just as strong, if not stronger, than Marvel's Doctor Strange. Many fans would like to imagine that Zatanna herself would make an even better Sorcerer Supreme. Number 5. Emma Frost Speaking on telepathic abilities, Emma Frost Frost is one strong telepath that also comes to mind. What can I say? I'm a sucker for a strong telepath, and I think it is one of the strongest superpowers around. Emma Frost has even used her abilities to cure mutants of their lack of control over their powers, famously helping Scott Summers, aka Cyclops, to control his optic blasts. And telepathic powers aside, she is also one of the actual strongest superheroes in the sense that she can turn herself into diamond, known for being a super tough substance, and able to withstand tons of pressure. So she is not only mentally strong, but physically strong as well. Shoot on sight. Number 4. Jean Grey Of course, when Jean Grey is alive and well, wait, how many times has she died now? And. How many times has she been resurrected? Anyways, when Jean is alive and well, she is an even stronger telepath than Emma Frost. And when teamed up with the Phoenix Force, she is even stronger and more deadly. Although she is not physically strong, Jean is also super skilled at telekinesis. And who needs super strength when you can lift almost anything with your mind? Jean could use that trick to make herself look insanely strong. Many have compared her to Charles Xavier, and many have argued that Jean is stronger, though she does sometimes struggle to access and control her full potential, which is perhaps where Professor X surpasses her. If you follow the X-Men films, they would even have us believe that Jean can defeat Apocalypse, simply by shouting. <laughs> Number 3. Wonder Woman Strong, smart, 
and funny? The Wonder Woman film starring Gal Gadot has shown us just how powerful Wonder Woman is. Not just as a superhero, but as an icon. When people think of female strength, Diana Prince is one of the first characters that comes to mind. Whether or not you are a comic book geek. Why? Well, for good reason. Wonder Woman not only has an iconic look, but beyond that, she was one of the first female superheroes ever to be introduced in the comic book world. She grew out of her jobs, first as a nurse, then as a secretary, and eventually became a founder founding member of the Justice League and their first female member. She is known for her wit, strength, lasso of truth, demigoddess status, and Amazonian heritage. And let's not forget that with Wonder Woman, we also potentially get an army of insanely strong Amazonian warriors. <laughs> Number 2 Supergirl Being related to one of the strongest superheroes grants you some pretty impressive strength. To prove that point, we have Supergirl soaring in on this list. Kara Zor-El is Superman's cousin who survived the destruction of Krypton, who shares an arch nemesis with her cousin, Lex Luthor. While on Earth, the relationship she builds with Superman becomes that of sort of a younger sister, and she goes by the name Linda. Although her story has been changed and rewritten a few times in DC's new 52 reboot. Regardless, the Supergirl we knew for years had abilities that echoed that of her cousin, making her one of the strongest female superheroes to grace the pages of any comic book. We're talking super speed, super strength, flight, invulnerability, and the famous heat vision. And while Superman and Batman have always been known for their famous friendship and bond, we will also now get to see this translate to Supergirl as well with the DCCW universe's introduction of Batwoman. E Number 1 Scarlet Witch of course, I couldn't make a most powerful list without putting Scarlet Witch at the top of it. You just can't deny the sheer awesome power that is Scarlet Witch. I mean, when you can alter reality, anything is possible. Scarlet Witch, who has since been retconned, was once known in the comics as Magneto's daughter, making her almost mutant royalty. But regardless of her ever changing backstory, she stands alone without any needed context as one of the strongest superheroes of all time, regardless of gender. Being skilled in the arcane arts, her ability to manipulate chaos magic makes her almost unstoppable when she wants to be. In fact, her abilities to warp reality are considered to be so strong that it's hard for us to even know if any of her other powers actually exist, or if she is simply warping reality to make them appear to exist. With Wanda, aka Scarlet Witch, almost everything that happens in the comics could be questionable as to whether or not they happen because she wills it, or they just actually are events that are happening. This is, after all, the woman who willed the Phoenix Force out of existence. Coming in at number 10, Jessica Jones. Since her debut in Marvel's Alias number 1, Jessica Jones has had a storied history and is one of Marvel's darker heroes. She obtained her powers in a car crash when her vehicle collided with a military convoy carrying radioactive chemicals. The experience killed her family but left her with superhuman strength and durability. She has gone by different names throughout her story arc, once known as Jewel and another time known as Nitrous. She is a skilled hand-to-hand -hand fighter and a talented private investigator. Her powers include accelerated healing, flight, and even telepathic resistance due to her experiences with the Purple Man and some help from Jean Grey. Jessica is a fighter and is more powerful than she looks. Number 9, Black Widow. We meet Black Widow first in Tales of Suspense number 52 in 1964 where she meets Iron Man and inadvertently helps him defeat some Soviet agents. Formerly a KGB agent, she was trained by the Red Room, part of the Black Widow Ops program, in an effort to create the ultimate super spy. She eventually defects to America and later joins the Avengers. With a history over 50 years long, Black Widow's powers vary from story to story, but some of her most impressive powers include peak human strength, speed, and endurance. She is a master martial artist, weapons expert, disguise expert, talented hacker. Honestly, I could go on and on, but you get the idea. She's a super spy. Number 8 Magic. Ileana Rasputin, aka Magic, is the younger sister of Colossus, and she's got a pretty long list of abilities. 
She's able to teleport, she can levitate, she has the power of necromancy, she can absorb souls, she's a master swordsman, she possesses a soul sword, and she can astral project. She's got a large skill set, as you can tell. Ileana was trapped in limbo after being kidnapped by Velasco. During her time in limbo, this dimension's version of Storm taught Ileana how to use spells and magic, and the cat is the one who taught her how to be a master swordsman that she is today. She also learned dark magic from Shathan, and he's like one of the most powerful demons in the Marvel Universe, so you know she got a good education from him. In a way. At one point, Ileana was even able to extract a piece of her soul to create the soul sword, and she used this to take over Limbo. She then returned to Earth and later learned that she was able to cover her body in Eldritch armor when she summons the soul sword. So not only is she a powerful sorcerer, but she also has magical armor to boot. Number seven, Celine. Celine is known for being a powerful energy vampire, and is something we don't really talk often enough about on this channel. She was originally known in the comics for being the Black Queen of the Hellfire Club, and is an ancient immortal. So how does she stay looking so young? By feeding on the psychic energy of others. But Celine isn't just a vampire, she is also known for her telepathic and telekinetic skills. She has also been shown to demonstrate other powers over the years, like pyrokinesis, and has dabbled in magic as well. Not only only that, but the energy she consumes can also be used to reinforce her physical strength and speed. Number six, Hope Summers. Basically, Hope Summers is mutant Jesus. Hope was the first mutant born after the decimation, the event where Scarlet Witch wiped out all but 198 mutants. When Hope was born, there was a hunt for her. Some believed that she was the mutant messiah, and others believed that she was some sort of antichrist. It was discovered that Hope had the ability to enhance, activate, and mimic the powers of others, and these powers came in handy when she was trusted with the task of going to look for other mutants that they called lights. When finding these other mutants, Hope was able to calm them, stabilize their powers, and even awaken their abilities. On top of all this, it was also revealed that Hope was the new phoenix, but this force was so unstable and unpredictable, Hope and Scarlet Witch joined forces, said no more phoenix, and the phoenix force just dispersed around the world, giving birth to new mutants and restoring the mutant population. So not only is Hope able to influence the X genes of the light, she was also strong enough to become the new host of the phoenix force, and then have the power to disperse it around the globe. She's OP. That's just my take on it. She's OP. Number 5, Emma Frost. On the flip side of the coin from Celine, who we talked about earlier, we have Emma Frost, the White Queen. Emma is also known for being a very powerful telepath, and while she might not be as versatile as Celine, she doesn't need to feed on psychic energy like Celine does. Emma Frost is often referred to as the White Queen from her time as being a part of the Hellfire Club as well. She was the White Queen. See what I'm saying? Emma started out originally as a villain in the comics, but didn't stay one for long, eventually reforming and even joining the X-Men team. She's an adept teacher and leader in addition to her powers. She's not only an immensely skilled telepath, but also possesses her diamond form, which makes her almost indestructible in battle. Almost. Number 4, Rogue. Rogue is the adopted daughter of Mystique, so you already know that if Mystique likes her, there's gotta be something special about her. We covered this in our last collab together, but Mystique isn't really the best mom, so for her to willingly take on the responsibility of being a mom, it's gotta be for a good reason. She's given away too many kids already. Rogue is another super powerful mutant. She has the ability to absorb the life forces, abilities, personality, and other physical characteristics of others through touch. She also had superhuman strength during the period of time that she had absorbed Carol Danvers' powers and personality within her. Now just think about how OP that is. Not only does Rogue have the ability to take the powers of others, but in certain scenarios she's also able to tap into the stolen abilities and use them against her opponent. This happened a lot while she had Carol Danvers still inside her, because not only was she able to tap into her abilities, but Carol was also able to take over Rogue's body in a way when Rogue was unconscious or under a lot of stress. So that's pretty powerful if you ask me. Also a little side fact for you, Mystique would have actually been Rogue's biological mom if the character's creator Chris Claremont hadn't left Marvel in 1991. So there you go. Number 3, Storm. Storm is referred to as a goddess for a good reason. She is a mighty hero who wields influential power over the elements. While this doesn't seem to be a power that Thor often reaches for in the comics, despite also possessing that, Storm does not shy away from using her mutant gifts against her enemy. When fighting Storm, you'll want to watch out as it is easy for her to call down a bolt of lightning to strike you at any point. As a child, she also possessed a fear of small spaces, known as claustrophobia. In the past, when this fear has been evoked,
invoked. Like when Doom encased her in a form fitting metal shell, Storm has also been shown to tap into the full potential of her powers, creating storms massive enough to envelop the whole planet. Number 2 Rachel Summers One of the most powerful and often underrated mutants of all is Rachel Summers. Rachel is the daughter of Scott Summers and Jean Grey from an alternate timeline. She was born with a small part of the Phoenix within her. Instead of her mother perishing after the X Men's clash with the Shi'ar, Jean lived and married Scott. Together they had Rachel, and because this version of Jean was still bonded with the Phoenix Force at the time, a part of the cosmic entity lives on in Rachel. Aside from her connection to the Phoenix Force, which grants her awesome power, enhancing both her telekinetic and telepathic powers as well, Rachel also possesses the ability of time manipulation. Her time manipulation powers are complex and can be useful in a variety of ways, such as when we see her use them in 2020's X Factor in issue 1, to chrono skip through the time of an object belonging to North Star's sister Aurora in order to track her down and investigate her death. Number 1 Jean Grey Jean Grey is probably one of the most or even the most powerful mutants simply because of her ability to control the Phoenix Force. Going from being X-Men's weakest member to being its strongest, Marvel Girl died and like a phoenix was reborn as well phoenix. In the uncanny X-Men issues 101 to 108, also known as the Phoenix Saga, we watched as Jean became the powerful mutant Phoenix and then in uncanny X-Men 129 to 138 we saw her evolve into Dark Phoenix. The Phoenix Force is a sum of all life in the universe and it takes hosts through time so this thing is already pretty damn powerful. But things get cranked up a few noxious when Phoenix is corrupted by evil taking on the new Dark Phoenix persona. In this state she consumes a star and 5 billion people on a nearby planet. Now if that doesn't scream all powerful being then I don't know man. Ultimately Jean's personality buried way down there manages to take control and the Phoenix ends up dying by suicide. Again even when she's not technically the all powerful Phoenix, Jean's personality was strong enough to sort of take down the Phoenix from the inside. Also, after her death, she was in the White Hot Room. Death told Jean that because her spirit was most closely carved from the Phoenix, that she was destined to take on the Phoenix Force. Obviously, it takes a very strong person to be considered a perfect fit for the Phoenix. Number 10, Enchantress. Enchantress is considered to be one of the greatest magic users in Asgard. She is a villainous woman who often plots against Thor Odinson, although sometimes plots against him because she maybe has a huge crush on him. In fact, there are multiple realities where Amora and Thor actually end up together, even having children in some realities, and in many of these alternate worlds, the villain and hero actually make a pretty good pairing. Enchantress is not just a gifted and skilled magic user who can use her powers to do all sorts of things, but she is also a fairly formidable physical opponent as well, as she is also of Asgard. Number 9 Scarlet Witch Scarlet Witch is obviously one of my all time favorite heroes and characters in the Marvel Universe. I love Wanda. Wanda Maximoff in the comics was originally a villain belonging to the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, but would later end up joining the Avengers. And she was never really too happy about being part of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Both her and her brother Quicksilver mainly seemed to stay because they felt they owed Magneto, the master of magnetism and leader of the group, their lives. He had seemingly saved them both, and so they were basically indebted to him. Eventually, they would learn that Magneto was also their father, but then, later on, Wanda would learn that although Quicksilver was indeed her brother, Magneto was actually not their father at all. It had apparently all been a trick of the high evolutionary's doing. Still, many of Wanda's most astounding feats are tied to this fake family, with her even at one point warping reality and giving her father the perfect family life, allowing him to become the ruler of a mutant civilization during House of M. Number 8 Penny Parker. You might recognize her from the Spider Verse film, but Penny actually made her debut in 2014 in Marvel's Edge of the Spider Verse, number 5. When she was 9 years old, her father died the original pilot of the 900 pound spider suit. She learns from her Uncle Ben and Aunt May that she's the only one who can take his place and allows herself to be bitten by the radioactive spider that powers half of the suit's CPU. Five years later, Mysterio begins infecting the people of New York with a hallucinogenic gas and it's Penny who shows up and dispatches him, later working alongside Daredevil. She also later joins the Spider Army, recruited by Peter Porker and Old Man Spider on a subway ride home. Penny is Japanese and a vegetarian. Her superpowered suit pays homage to classic mecha anime and some of her classmates names are actually references to popular shows. Number 7 Spider Woman First appearing in Marvel's Spotlight number 32 in 1977, Jessica Drew grew up in a small cottage with her father, 
Jonathan Drew. John found uranium in large amounts on the property and went on to build a research facility performing controversial studies in genetics and cell regeneration. Eventually, little Jessica becomes poisoned from the constant uranium exposure and John injects her with an untested serum made with the blood of several uncommon species of spiders. And you'll never guess what kind of power she gets. He seals her in a genetic accelerator while she undergoes a transformation and she stays in stasis for decades, her aging greatly slowed. Now, as a fully grown woman with hardly any life experience, she wastes no time getting into trouble. Her first romance ends in tragedy when she accidentally kills her boyfriend and later is manipulated by Mentalo into joining Hydra. Hoping to mold her into an assassin, sends her off to assassinate Nick Fury. She refuses and fights back against her masters, eventually escaping and starting a new life as a friendly neighborhood bounty hunter, Spider Woman. She later finds herself dubbed the Dark Angel of San Francisco, swinging around the city and solving crimes just like the real Spidey. Number 6. Spider Gwen Raised by George Stacy alone after her mother died, her free spirit and creativity often clashed with her father's rigid attitude. She became friends with Peter Parker and formed a band with her classmates known as the Mary Janes. After being bitten by a genetically engineered spider, she gained spider powers and became known as Spider Woman. Peter Parker, desperate to be like his idol Spider Woman, conducts an experiment on himself that turns him into a monstrous lizard-like beast and Gwen winds up beating the snot out of him, resulting in his death. This leaves her branded a criminal by the city and the guilt of Peter's death hangs heavy over her head. She doubles her efforts to fight crime, eventually having her identity uncovered by her father. At one point, she travels to another universe and meets a version of Peter Parker that became the Goblin, overwhelmed by rage at not being able to save his universe's version of Gwen Stacy. She attempts to recruit him into the Spider Army, but he refuses. Later, when she reveals that she's actually an alternate Gwen Stacy, he sacrifices himself to save her like he wishes he could have in his own dimension. Number 5. Sil First appearing in Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3 in 2014, Cindy Moon was born with an eidetic memory. At a scientific demonstration, the radioactive spider that gave Peter Parker his powers also bit her in the ankle. The first use of her powers was actually when she got home and accidentally webbed up her parents. She is then taken away by Ezekiel Sims, who locks her away to protect her from Morlun, the devourer of totems. He's on an interdimensional mission to basically kill every single version of Spider-Man. Good luck, am I right? So yeah, she's locked away in this tower with a whole bunch of books and tapes and stuff, and she stays there willingly to keep herself safe. Spider-Man finds out about this at some point, and he comes along to rescue her. She improvises a sweet costume made of webs, and the two immediately begin an intimate relationship. You can only imagine what a mess that would make. They make a pretty good team though, and later go up against Electro together. She once even saved Spider-Man from being unmasked by the Black Cat on live television. Number 4. May Parker May is the daughter of Mary Jane and Peter in a future alternate universe. She first appeared in What If Volume 2, number 105. When Peter Parker loses a leg in an intense battle against Green Goblin, Spidey decides to focus more on being a father and decides to keep his past from his daughter. Unfortunately, she develops her own spider powers similar to his at the age of 15. She has a few adventures of her own before her parents discover her dual identity, but Pete and Mary Jane are supportive of her crime fighting passion. She later goes on to help S.H.I.E.L.D. battle against Carnage and once encounters a clone of herself. She later assists the Web Warriors and the Superior Spider Army. Number 3. Spider Bitch First appearing in Wolverine Volume 3, number 67, in 2008, she is technically Peter Parker's granddaughter, with her parents being Hawkeye and Tonya Parker. She's super badass, and I love her costume. She is from a future alternate reality where Kingpin rules over Hammer Falls, a future version of Las Vegas. She gathers up a team of heroes and attempts to take control of the area, but ends up being captured by Kingpin and set to be executed. Her father, Hawkeye, helps her to break free and is shocked when she ends up killing Kingpin in her rage and then attempts to kill Papa Hawkeye as well. She eventually embraces her legacy and becomes Spider-Girl, later recruited by Superior Spider-Man into the Spider Army. She ultimately survives in the end and returns to her home dimension. Number 2. Lady Spider Appearing in Spider-Verse number 1 in 2014, May Riley's father kept numerous animals in his study, including a spider. 
One day, May opened up the cage, believing the spider to be upset about being held captive, and she got bit. It was actually just a normal spider. Later on in life, her father dies and she builds a super suit with mechanical arms and mechanical web shooters, becoming the Lady Spider. She has three university degrees and is the only female student in her field. She first used her suit to rescue the mayor from Electro, and when the six men of the Sinistry arrive, led by Green Goblin, she holds them off, forcing them to retreat. And now number one, Spider-Man. In Marvel's What If number 23, released in 1980, we meet the amazing Spider-Man, also known as Aunt May. When her nephew Peter Parker forgets his lunch at home, a concerned May Parker rushes off to a science demonstration to make sure he gets it. He's a growing boy. There, she is bitten by a radioactive spider which gave her spider powers. I'm serious. May first uses her power to earn some money for her family doing stunts, but later defeats the villain Leapfrog and becomes a real crime fighter. When the master weaver Karn shows up in her universe on his relentless hunt to kill anyone who possesses spider powers, she heroically surrenders herself to save her family. Also known as Spider Lady, or sometimes just Granny, May is later recruited into the Spider Army during the Spider Geddon event to battle against the Inheritors on the Marvel Prime Universe. In the end, the evil Inheritors are defeated by transferring their consciousness into infant human babies, which May actually adopts and takes back to her universe. Truly your friendly neighborhood aunt. Number 10, Hawk Girl. Hawk Girl is a hero who is known for belonging to part of the elite superhero team, the Justice League. She is actually the reincarnation of Shra, who was punished for helping to save Katar the Deathbringer, despite his misdeeds. As punishment, Shra could never permanently die and instead would be reincarnated into a new life, keeping with her all the memories of her previous lives, which gives her a lot of experience to use and means that she is extremely wise when when it comes to tactics, fighting, and even approaches to science and advancement. Katar the Deathbringer was also cursed to be reincarnated and is known as Hawkgirl's partner, Hawkman, in his current incarnation. Hawkgirl also has wings, can fly, and I believe currently her wings are also infused with nth metal still. I think that's still a thing. Aside from that, Kendra Saunders is also super strong, durable, and has a reasonably potent healing factor. Always helpful. Always helpful to heal. Number 9, Dr. Light. No, no, and not that Dr. Light, don't worry. We're talking about the second Dr. Light, the heroic Dr. Light, Kimio Hoshi. In the New Earth continuity, Dr. Light was not at all related to Arthur Light, the original Dr. Light, known for being a major villain. Instead, she was actually a hero who happened to get blasted with energy from the Vega Star when Monitor reached out to create a champion. After sensing the anti Monitor and kind of getting spooked by his destructive vibes, Monitor was like, I don't think so, gonna just shoot some star energy out and hopefully that hits someone who is gonna be a cool hero. Fingers crossed. Dr. Light is a scientist and astronomer turned into a hero who can tap into energy from the Vega star, giving her almost unlimited power. She can use this energy to create illusions and energy constructs, blast her enemies, fly, and phase. Up next, number eight, Moira McTaggart. Moira is not just a hot scientist, people. This was big news in the recent House of X, where it was revealed that she wasn't just a human ally and a mutant advocate. Oh no, girl is a mutant too, people. And she's impressive as f Moira's mutant powers allow for her to reincarnate, in a sense. She's a mutant with limited reality warping reincarnation powers. She has perfect memory and is able to hide her true nature to mutants and mutant detection devices. So far, she's lived 10 lives, having started her life again after she died, possessing full memories of her previous lives. When she returns to being in utero, she's fully sentient. So yeah, that is pretty darn impressive. Moving on to number seven, DC's Valkyries. Moving on from Marvel over to DC for this number, let's talk about a group of bad women, the Valkyries. While notably different than the Valkyries of Marvel fame, DC's Valkyries are still rooted in Nordic legend, being armored maidens who ride winged horses from a place called Asgard. They would first appear in a DC comic all the way back in 1946 in Comic Cavalade issue 17 and have appeared since with little consistency. In the Golden Age, they appeared as Wonder Woman villains, but now on Prime Earth, they are part of the same race as the Amazons. Hmm. Regardless, they have always remained immortal beings, ones with superhuman strength and quite the talent for combat. Up next, number six, Serk from Earth 2. Another DC character at this number. Serk, specifically the Serk of Earth 2, is immortal. This version, who debuted during the Golden Age in 1949's Wonder Woman issue 37, was initially a villain for Diana prior to being defeated by her. 
After her defeat, she would be taken to a place called Transformation Island, located on Paradise Island, where she was taught the ways of love and discipline by the Amazonians. Cirque's immortality is rooted in her magic powers. She also has the ability to command Sorakan jewelry trees using chlorokinesis and is capable of metamorphosis with the ability to turn humans into animals. She also has a killer jawline. That's a power too, right? In at number five, Threnody. Threnody is Melody Jacobs, a Marvel mutant who first graced their panels in 1993 in Strife's Strike File issue one. She's a necroplasmic energy vampire, empowered by necroplasm. She's capable of sensing certain necroplasmic energies that surround an individual when they are dying or near death. To her, she's enraptured by the scent of death and the taste of the energy. Eerie, isn't it? She can also manipulate said energy to absorb the remaining life energies that a dying individual is releasing, and then can convert them into explosive plasma or temporarily reanimate someone into a zombie. In other words, don't f*** with her. She can create hordes of zombies if the energy isn't supplied. Now, because of these powers, she is also immortal, able to absorb the necroplasmic energy of her own death in order to regenerate or return to life. Up next, number four, All Mother Storm. This version of X-Men member Storm hails from Earth 20329, also known as Marvel's steampunk god world. Yes, that is a thing. This is a universe riddled by mutant gods, who eventually an evil Charles Xavier took mental control of. In this universe, Storm is an immortal god known as the Skybreaker and is married to Thor. When she was taken over by Xavier mentally, he caused her to create a massive drought. Luckily, she wasn't under his control for too long and would offer the other X-Men the ability to become immortal, turning Emmeline Frost Summers into an immortal god with a diamond body. I wonder who her parents are. All Mother Storm has the same powers as her 616 counterpart, but with a divine twist, seeing that she is immortal and has the ability to bestow god powers and immortality onto others. And as she puts it, she's free forever from the pain, doubt, and agony of mortal life. Moving on to number three, Donna Troy. Donna Troy, previously known as Wonder Girl, is an Amazonian who, after some fun retconning, was created by an evil sorceress to destroy Wonder Woman. Diana would find out about this, save the day, and then shield Donna from the truth of her origin by giving her false memories of being a normal girl who was rescued and raised as an Amazonian. Ah yes, gotta love a retcon. Donna would become a founding member of the Teen Titans and has long remained a part of DC's canon despite enduring her fair share of retcons, as we mentioned multiple times in this number. She was gifted immortality thanks to her Amazonian physiology. Amazonians, fun fact, can live forever, but can be killed in combat or by accident. And if you're part of the Amazonians of Bana Migdal, well, they lost their immortality when they broke apart from the original Amazonian group, so. With Donna Troy being on our list, it's probably no surprise that our next number found her way into our top three, and at number two, Wonder Woman. In general, Wonder Woman is a character who has had a tough time getting killed thanks to how immensely strong and powerful she is. For the record, on Prime Earth, Diana Prince has been bestowed with divine empowerment gifted with various powers by the gods of Olympus. She's a demigoddess with longevity that allows her to live much longer than the regular human being. But she ain't immortal. That being said, she is a character who has had multiple iterations of her created in the past that exist on other Earths that are, in fact, immortal. This is the case on Earth 2, Earth 508, aka DC Super Friends, Gal Gadot in the DC Extended Universe, a slew of negative Earths for the Dark Multiverse, many of which she's murdered in despite being immortal, and even the Wonder Woman television series starring Linda Carter. Diana, in general, is also one of DC's iconic trifecta, meaning she's got a decent amount of plot armor that prevents her from being killed off at the whims of DC's publishers. And hey, that counts for something, right? And finally, in our number one spot, Jean Grey. I mean, there's a slew of jokes that could be made here. Girl has died again, and again, and again, and again. But there's also a lot of truth to it, thanks to her being an Omega-level mutant and one of the most powerful female superheroes out there. Jean, without the Phoenix Force, is incredibly powerful. But when acting as the Phoenix Force's avatar, that power multiplies significantly. She's capable of manipulating matter and energy on a subatomic scale using her telekinesis. She's capable of resurrection, which is largely to thank for a handful of her resurrections. This makes her immortal to an extent. When she does die, she won't stay dead. Case in point, let's count those deaths and resurrections. Or at least some of them. The first happened in Uncanny X-Men issue 101 in 1975 when she first encountered the Phoenix while trying to telepathically maneuver a space shuttle with her teammates on it safely back to Earth. She crashed and seemingly died, but turns out the Phoenix Force saved her, resurrecting her in that very same issue. 
Once it corrupted her a little later on, she took her own life in Uncanny X-Men issue 137 in 1980. After that, Madeline Pryor, her clone, showed up, Cyclops fell for Madeline, they had a kid, and then the real Jean came back in 1985 with the reveal that the Phoenix had actually made a copy of her and put her real body and self into an egg underwater, a Phoenix egg, in which she was reborn again and absolved of the planetary genocide that the Dark Phoenix version of her committed. Convenient. In the early 90s, Jean would be killed by a sentinel, but then resurrected two issues later. Then, during Grant Morrison's run on New X-Men, he killed her off when the Phoenix Force bonded with the real her, and in order to stop her, Magneto used an electromagnetic pulse to give her a stroke, with Wolverine then stabbing her in order to save her from an agonizing death. I mean, that sounds pretty agonizing to me. She would be resurrected again in 2005 in Phoenix Endsong, in which her soul went into a dimension known as the White Hot Room and ascended to another plane of existence. So technically she was dead, but not really? From there, whether she was dead or not, she would be MIA for over a decade, eventually coming back in 2018 in a story titled Phoenix Resurrection, The Return of Jean Grey. Number 10, Dust. To me, Dust is almost the physical embodiment of the Thanos snap, you know? Anyway, Sora Kadir, aka Dust, is a mutant whose abilities allow her to transform her body into, well, dust. She was born in Afghanistan and was sold into slavery. She displayed her powers when a slave trader tried to remove her kneecap and she flayed him alive. Yes, she flayed him alive. Once the X-Men got knowledge of Soraya and her abilities, they went looking for her and brought her back to the Academy. Since Dust is a sand morph, she is able to reform her body into a humanoid or some sort of sand form. In this form, she's most resistant to injury and she's difficult to detect telepathically. In this sandstorm form, she's able to hurt her enemies by scouring the flesh from their bones, as well as being able to enter their lungs, hurting their opponents from the inside. Number 9, Kitty Pride. Kitty Pride's powers are some of the most useful ones around. She can phase through almost anything and as such can travel into some of the most secure locations in the world without any trouble. Not only that, but she can use her phasing abilities in a fight to become completely untouchable, phasing through her opponents or even making her opponents phase momentarily only to become solid once again with something now lodged inside them. Kitty also received a power upgrade from an artifact known as the Black Vortex, which granted her more control over her powers while also increasing their strength to an extent. Number 8, Hawk Girl. Female counterpart to the hero Hawkman, Shira Sanders first appeared in Flash Comics number 1 in 1940. She has been a member of the All-Star Squadron and an associate of the Justice Society of America. Centuries ago, she was Che Ara, princess of ancient Egypt. Her and her lover, Prince Khufu, were killed by Hathset with a knife made of an alien material, nth metal. Now, Khufu and Che Ara are doomed to find one another and fall in love in every reincarnation, only for Hathset to find them and murder them again. Her powers most notably include animal empathy, she can speak to birds, and improved strength, vision, and healing, as well as a vulnerability to deja vu. She sometimes experiences visions or memories from her past lives, which is especially troublesome when it happens in the middle of combat. Number seven. Invisible Woman. Also known as Susan Storm Richards, the Invisible Girl had her big debut in Fantastic Four number one in 1961. She has had a storied history as the origins of the Fantastic Four have been revisited a few times. The team was given their powers when the four of them were mutated by cosmic rays testing an experimental starship. She later discovers new powers including the ability to turn objects invisible and manipulate force fields. She eventually marries Dr. Reed and they end up having a baby. She goes on superhero maternity leave and Crystal of the Inhuman steps in, but this list has nothing to do with superhero children. She has the ability to manipulate color, create psionic force fields, and even travel through the air, projecting psionic force beneath her to create columns of energy traveling in a zigzag flight path. Sue's force fields are incredibly powerful and can even prevent telekinesis from passing through them. Fun facts about Sue, she's an expert sailor, carries a universal translator, and wears a micro galaxy ring containing 74 inhabited worlds. Number six. Vixen. Also known as Mary McCabe, Vixen first appeared in Action Comics in 1981. She grew up in a small village in Africa and as a child heard from her parents the legend of the Tantu Totem, a token that grants the wearer all the powers of the animal kingdom if the powers are being used to protect the innocent. She eventually moves to America and begins a successful career as a fashion model, using her wealth to travel around the world. She eventually returns to Africa, stealing the totem back from her evil uncle 
Mustafa Maxai. The Tantu totem enables her to tap into the morphogenetic field of the earth, sometimes known as the red. It is the force connecting all animal life and microorganisms in the universe, and tapping into it allows her to access incredible animal powers. She can mimic the abilities of any animal she can think of. Vixen is also a skilled athlete, boxer, and hand-to-hand -hand fighter. One drawback of her powers, if she stays in animal form too long, she begins to become less human and more animal-like, seemingly losing control and risking giving in completely to animal behaviors. The full extent of her power over the red is unknown, but once she cooperated with Animal Man and Tristis, and together they created an entire universe. It's rumored that Vixen will be appearing in DC's Truth and Justice in 2021. Number 5. Mera. Mera first appeared in Aquaman number 11 in 1963, and she's not just the lady version of Aquaman. Man. Mera hails from Dimension Aqua, where DC writers are sent as punishment for coming up with lame dimension names. A criminal named Liron seizes control of the kingdom, and she is banished, exiled off to the Earth Dimension, where she meets Aquaman. Liron follows Mera, but working together with Aquaman, she manages to defeat him, and Mera opts to stay with Aquaman in Atlantis. She is an amphibian, possessing gills that allow underwater breathing. She has the power of hydrokinesis, allowing her to increase density of water, and and create water missiles from hard water. She has exceptional strength and durability, as well as telepathic communication with other aquatic peoples, but not with lesser marine life like Aquaman. No hitching a ride on a whale for Mera. Number four, Raven. First appearing in DC Comics Presents number 26 in 1980, Raven was part of Teen Titans from the beginning. She was born a half-breed, the daughter of a human mother and a demon overlord father. Fearing for her future, Raven's mother takes her to Azeroth, a peaceful reality where she's taught how to control her emotions in order to maintain control of her inherited demonic powers. When she learns that Trigon is coming to her dimension, she vows to stop him and approaches the Justice League, but they refuse her after the magical Zatanna senses her demonic parentage. Throughout her story, she has been possessed, become a spirit, and once had to find a new body. Raven has the ability to send out her soul self for spying and stuff, but it can also fight and use telekinesis. She can teleport, fly, and use psychokinesis to manipulate matter at the atomic level. She is also tele-empathetic, meaning she can feel the emotions of those around her and absorb others' pain to heal them or heal herself through meditation. She can generate and manipulate darkness as well, usually in the form of a raven. It's been noted by her demon father Trigon that she only uses a small potential of her power, and if she released her inner demon, she could potentially reach near infinite power. Number three, Starfire. Starfire comes from the planet Tamarin in the Vega system, where golden skinned humanoids make up a passionate society driven more by emotion than by reason. Starfire, AKA Princess Coriander, had an older sister that was the first in the line of succession, but this sister had a childhood illness that affected her abilities. She became known as Blackfire, and she fled her home after being denied her birthright, aligning herself with a fascist empire known as the Citadel. The Citadel returns and enslaves the homeworld, and eventually, Starfire is forced to flee and finds her way to Earth, where she later joins the Teen Titans. Starfire can channel and project energy in the form of Star Bolts, and when using her abilities in full force, her eyes glow and her fiery hair appears to glow and flicker. She is super powerful, with a unique physiology allowing her to survive even in the cold vacuum of space. She can fly, absorb energy, self-sustain, and assimilate languages through touch. Number 2, Miss Martian. Also known as Megan Moore, she first appeared in Teen Titans Volume 3 in 2006. In the DC Universe, there are two versions of Martians, green-skinned peaceful philosophers and white-skinned vicious warriors. The story is, Megan's parents sent her on a rocket to the Vega system, home of the Citadel, to escape from the Martian Civil War. But secretly, she is actually a white Martian captured by the US government. The exact details of her origin are debatable, but she did have a brief stint with the Teen Titans, not staying for very long. Similar to the Kryptonians, Martians have a different physiology and unique abilities. Miss Martian has a whole host of powers at her disposal, including telepathy, mind control, and telekinesis. She has a variety of visions, including x-ray, infrared, and microscopic. She has the usual super strength, super speed, can phase through walls, and even turn invisible. She has a regenerative healing factor and could potentially regenerate an entire body from one severed limb. And now, number one, Zatanna. First appearing in Hawkman number four in 1964, 
Lord. Zatanna is an incredibly powerful member of the mystical Homo Magi, a subspecies of magic-wielding humans. The daughter of a famous magician, she grew up in a small house in New York, near the infamous Arkham Asylum. She became a successful illusionist before discovering her true powers while searching for her missing father. She meets quite a few heroes on this journey and returns to her career on the stage, occasionally assisting people in need with her powers. Zatanna has such a ridiculously comprehensive list of powers, there's no way I could list them all, but check this out. First of all, she can manipulate and create magical elements, anything from fire to water to light. She also has telekinesis, teleportation, reality alteration, and every warlock's favorite, Eldritch Blast. She has the power of flight, force fields, healing, hypnosis, I could honestly go on forever. Fun facts about Zatanna, she speaks the words in reverse when she's casting a spell, and she's a vegetarian. Also one of her ancestors is none other than Leonardo da Vinci. Number 10, Spiderling, also known as Anna Mae Parker, she first appeared in 2015 in Spider-Man's Renew Your Vows storyline as part of the Secret Wars event. She is the daughter of Peter Parker and Mary Jane. When the multiverse is destroyed by incursions and recreated as Battle World, she finds herself living in a domain known as the Regency. This place is dominated by Regent, an evil mastermind on a mission to eliminate all superheroes and steal their powers. Growing up, she develops spider powers of her own, causing her parents to fear that she will one day be hunted. She actually is hunted down later and kidnapped by Venom, who recently escaped from prison. The epic confrontation that follows ends with Spider-Man bringing a burning building crashing down on Venom, presumably killing him. Ooh, ooh, Daddy Spider-Man is protective. Later in life, Anna confronts the villain Mole Man on her own while her parents are busy arguing about their daughter being a superhero. The Parker trio goes on to defeat the villain together and Peter names her Spiderling. She has the same sense of responsibility as Peter, but with Mary Jane's headstrong attitude. Number 9, Spider Girl. First appearing in one of Marvel's What If storylines, number 7, in 1978. Betty Brant was a newly hired employee at the Daily Bugle. Attending a scientific demonstration with her colleagues, she winds up in the same lab Peter Parker is visiting with his classmates. A radioactive spider drops down and lands on Betty's hand, resulting in her being bit instead of Peter. Concerned for Betty, Peter convinces Jameson to let her take the day off and he invites her out to dinner. Later, the two of them discover Betty has developed spider powers and Pete inspires her to take up crime fighting so he can take some pictures and sell them to the bugle. Jameson, of course, only uses the photos to start a smear campaign about Spider Girl being a menace. The two later fail to stop a burglar who goes on to kill Peter's Uncle Ben. Betty is horrified by this and resolves to abandon her identity as Spider Girl. Number 8, She Hulk. Jennifer Walters, aka She Hulk, is introduced in Savage She Hulk number 1 in 1980. As the cousin of Bruce Banner, Jennifer is shot by a mobster and then given a transfusion of Bruce Banner's blood to save her. She is later attacked a second time and the danger activates the gamma radiation particles in her blood, causing her to transform into the Hulk. Meek and mousy in her human form, Jennifer enjoyed the newfound confidence of her Hulk form and quickly gained the same intelligence as her normal self even when transformed. She was in the first Secret Wars, temporary member of the Fantastic Four, and even joined the Avengers. Her powers include the usual gamma radiation package, strength, stamina, healing factor, and she is trained with Captain America and Gamora. And and she has a law degree. Number 7, Radiant Red. One of the heavy hitters from the Radiant Black universe is Radiant Red. I love her. She is my favorite Radiant. Might be controversial to say, but I love Radiant Red. She is one of my favorite characters hands down from the Massiverse. While some might see her as more of an anti-hero or even a straight up villain at times, I would say at the end that Satomi isn't really a bad person. She's just done some bad stuff. I see her personally myself as more of an anti-hero, but included in, of course, that term anti-hero is the word hero itself. So I'm gonna include her on this list. Also, you know that top 10 most powerful female anti-heroes is not going to get as much love as this list will, so I got a hyper. Radiant Red initially appeared on the scene as a bank robber, but as we learned through the one issue exploring her character from Radiant Black and her own spin-off miniseries, Satomi did have some pretty compelling reasons for her actions. At the end of the day, she was trying to help the man that she loved, her fiance at the time, Owen. In fact, Satomi did this because she thought she loved Owen, but eventually she woke up to the realization that he's actually been manipulating her into staying with him while he mistreated 
treats and disrespects her. I love the ideal approach to her character, the dichotomy of a character as powerful as Radiant Red, who can absorb materials around her to bolster her own strength, almost like I would say limitlessly, being so vulnerable in her relationship. Her character is kind of an exploration of the idea of strength in all its forms and what that means to us. I just think it's such a cool character. Also a character that's, yeah, just a character that's so strong, but struggles in this very personal way. It's so deep. I love it. Number six, Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch is one of my all time favorite characters. If you've watched our videos before on the channel, if you've watched some of my videos, you probably know this. And normally I would be sad to have her so low on a list when we're talking about powerhouses. But this is a list that is literally chock full of powerhouses from comics, so I feel a little bit better about it right now. Seriously, whittling this down to 10 was hard enough, and even then there are so many amazingly powerful characters that I personally regret not having on here. And even then, I feel like you could actually rearrange this list for power levels depending on your opinions. All of them are so powerful, I wish they could all be number one. Which is why we really need to do more parts. There are so many women, Wanda included, who deserve a top spot for their power, resilience, and their skill set. Wanda Maximoff herself is a powerful witch who initially in the comics was believed to have hex abilities that were a result of her being a mutant. That was basically her mutant power. Magical abilities as a mutation have always intrigued me at Marvel Comics, as mysticism for the most part kind of tends to be a completely separate world from the mutants, but one that also sometimes has overlap with mutants, with some mutants being able to do magic or having mutant powers to bring them closer to the magical world. Of course, we'd later have Wanda completely separated from this idea when we learned she was never really a mutant, but simply disguised as one from a young age by the High Evolutionary. In fact, her insanely powerful magical abilities, which are at a reality warping level, come from her family heritage as a Maximoff, with her birth mother being an extremely powerful witch as well. However, if we ever wanted to make her a mutant again and make the magical abilities also kind of mutant powers, I'd be down for that. So Marvel, if you want to change it back, I'm cool with it, just so you know. Number five, Big Barda. Big Barda is a hero from DC Comics that I don't get to talk about as much on this channel, or I just don't really think of highlighting as much as I probably should, or as much as I feel like I should, I guess. Barda is just a fantastic character. She was once a member of Darkseid's elite force of warriors known as his female furies, but ended up leaving Apocalypse to be with the escaped prisoner from the planet, who also became a hero, Miracle Man, who also, of course, is Barda's husband. And thank goodness, because good knows how much her heroes could use her skills as a warrior and her strength, and honestly, I love Miracle Man and Barda together, they're so cute. If you are a big Barda fan, fun fact, she will also be joining up with the Birds of Prey in Kelly Thompson's new volume of the series, so like me, you might also be tempted to add that to your pull. And I'm not supposed to be collecting big two right now. Can I make an exception for Birds of Prey? Let me know what you think I should do. I already got Nightwing and I already want to add Titans, this is a problem, DC stop. Number four, Storm. I mean, you all know how much I love Storm, and if you're new to the channel, don't worry you're about to. Storm is a literal goddess who canonically gets more powerful the more people believe in her. While putting her above a fellow powerful mutant like Hope Summers might seem kind of odd to some, it's also important to remember that Storm literally fought a shapeshifter from Morocco who tried to beat Storm at her own game, using her own powers against her by embodying a version of Storm in her prime. And still, Storm bested her. So if Storm can beat someone who is supposed to be, you know, the best version of her own self, I mean, I don't know about you, but I would expect Storm could handle herself in a one-on-one -on -one fight against someone like Hope or Rogue, you know what I mean? I just mean, this is Storm we're talking about. And no disrespect to Hope or Rogue, love both of them too. Number three, Wonder Woman. There are so many amazingly powerful women in comics these days, but one of the first women to basically start this trend, one of the first female superheroes we had, was none other than Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is Princess Diana, daughter of the Queen of the Amazons, Hippolyta. In some versions of the story, she is also secretly the daughter of Zeus. Herself a demigoddess, Wonder Woman is one of the strongest women in the DC Universe, and is also just one of the strongest members of the Justice League, usually, in general, I'd say. Recently, Wonder Woman was elevated to cosmic goddess level, following the conclusion of the Dark Metal epic with the event Dark Knight's Death Metal. Seriously, I love Wonder Woman. She is one of the most uplifting characters. Initially, I didn't want to like Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman because she just seems so perfect, but then, I don't know, Diana just always makes you love her, you know what I mean? She just, she is perfect, but she's also grounded, if that's possible. While she is a badass that isn't afraid to permanently take out her foes, she's also one of the kindest heroes around, often choosing to fight against evil with her guiding principles of truth, justice, and love. But still, if you mess with her, she will kill you, potentially. She's still a warrior. 
which I love. Number two, Jean Grey. Jean Grey is probably one of the most powerful superheroes around. Many people know her in terms of her most powerful form as the Phoenix or the Dark Phoenix. But in reality, a lot of the power we actually know her for actually comes from within her. In fact, Jean has even stated in the past that the Phoenix actually, in a way, became a part of her. So even without it, it lives within her. She doesn't need to be a host to basically tap into Phoenix power, if that makes sense. Jean is one of my favorite characters in the comics because she is also so well known for her sense of empathy. She can feel what others feel and often tries to meet people with kindness. In fact, one of the ways she defeated one of the X-Men's most vicious villains was by using the power of empathy. The villain in question being Professor Xavier's evil twin, Cassandra Nova. I mean, you know that you're epic when you can just defeat someone by making them feel emotions and then that basically breaks them. That's pretty crazy. Number one, Adam Eve. Probably one of the most powerful women I can think of in comics hails from the more indie side of things. She is Adam Eve, also known as Samantha Wilkins. Although most people just call her Eve. Adam Eve is powerful because she can literally manipulate matter. She could actually make herself super rich if she wanted to, literally rearranging atoms to make gold bricks or dollar bills endlessly, but she chooses not to because she knows doing so is, you know, not right, and that creating wealth in that way could have, you know, grossly destabilizing effects on the economy, especially if you do that in a massive scale. Every time you see Adam Eve in her costume, she actually made that costume herself by rearranging the atoms of her clothes. So cool. Adam Eve is not only able to manipulate matter around her in this way, but she is also immortal as a result of her power sets. When she inevitably aged and died, she basically resurrected herself, instead returning to life as she was in her prime. Pretty impressive. Honestly, don't sleep on Adam Eve. She's, she's crazy. Number 10, Zealot. Originally a character from Wildstorm, Zealot ended up being incorporated into the main DC universe after DC Comics bought the rights to Jim Lee's whole Wildstorm imprint. Zealot is known for being a main member of the Wildcast usually, although she has recently been revealed as one of the newest members of the Birds of Prey. However, if we're talking about the original version of this character, she possessed dark magic abilities and skills thanks to her previous connection to Tapestry. She also possesses, even still today, her Cherubim physiology, or Cherubim, if that's how I'm supposed to say that. Honestly, it looks like Cherubim, like an angel, but with a K. Which renders her virtually immortal. She's lived for thousands of years as a result, which also makes her a pretty skilled fighter, thanks to, of course, millennia of experience. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd, and if you also love powerful ladies, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Who doesn't love powerful ladies, right? You don't love powerful ladies. What's going on with you? Are you okay? Do you need a hug? Number nine, Hope Summers. Hope Summers is insanely powerful. Initially, Rogue was one of the most powerful characters I knew in regards to Marvel Comics and in regards to the X-Men, but then, Hope Summers was introduced. Hope is basically like Rogue, but if Rogue initially had more control of her powers and didn't have to go on a whole journey of self-discovery to get there. Also, if Rogue didn't need to touch people to take their powers. Hope just has to be in their vicinity. However, this also means that Hope needs to be around others to be powerful. So that's why I decided to rank her a little lower, where normally I would rank her higher, but I just thought, if we're talking about Hope by herself, alone, I don't know. So fighting Hope solo, is not quite as intimidating in theory. Although even then, she is the adopted daughter of Cable, which means that she is definitely not someone you'd wanna mess with, even if you weren't bringing powers to the fight. I mean, Cable is a badass, and he definitely raised Hope to be a badass too, so don't forget about that. Number eight, Nubia. Nubia! I love Nubia. She is such a fascinating and interesting character. Throughout the years, her origin has been changed somewhat, but initially, I knew her best as Wonder Woman's twin sister. Like Diana, Nubia was also born from Clay in that origin, and was a daughter of Hippolyta given life by Aphrodite. However, over the years, her origin would be retconned multiple times. Currently now, in the main continuity, Nubia was actually an ancient princess who, after being betrayed by one of her own, was usurped and later reborn via the Well of Souls, the last Amazon to be born this way for a long, long time. Something that has never changed, however, is Nubia's sheer power and her strength as a character. As an Amazon, Nubia is immortal, a gifted and renowned fighter and has superhuman strength, durability, agility, and stamina. Nubia recently went on to become Queen of Themyscira in Hippolyta's place, and eventually even was declared Queen of not just Themyscira and the Amazons residing there, but actually all Amazons the world over, which is pretty powerful. You know what I mean? I mean, I know we're considering Nubia by herself, but if we weren't, if we were just considering Nubia's influence, she could literally mobilize all the Amazons. That's crazy. Number seven, Enchantress. Enchantress over at DC Comics is kind of a two 
for one deal. I feel like I got a lot of characters actually on here that are kind of two for one deals. June Moon makes up her civilian persona, a totally different person actually, while Enchantress is the dark witch that is her super powered villain persona. The two became attached years ago and have not been able to be separated since. In the film Suicide Squad, Moon, played by Cara Delevingne, was an archaeologist, but in the comics, June Moon is actually an artist, making her possession by the entity known as the Succubus even more disturbing and strange. Enchantress first appeared all the way back in the 60s, created by Bob Haney and Howard Purcell, making her first appearance in Strange Adventures issue 187. Number 6. Star Sapphire Star Sapphire is often known for being the rival of Green Lantern. She is Carol Ferris, initially Hal Jordan's love interest turned his villain, who also was often still kinda his love interest. She herself becomes a lantern, but just not of the green variety, instead becoming a Violet Lantern, joining the Star Sapphires, or if you prefer, the Violet Lantern Corps. The Violet Spectrum of Emotion and Light actually rules over love, longing, lust, so I think you can imagine what kind of power Carol holds both over Hal and, you know, any others who happen to fall into her path. I also love the idea that someone wielding love can be just as deadly as someone like a Red Lantern or a Green Lantern who wield the power of rage or willpower respectively. Number 5. Grail Grail is the powerful daughter of Darkseid and the Amazonian assassin Mirana. Being that she is both Amazonian by birth and also a new god, she is extremely powerful. She also has been shown to possess magical abilities as well that even allow her to have some power over life and death, successfully bringing back her father Darkseid after he died. Initially though, Grail was actually born with her mother's hope that Grail would one day be the key to defeating Darkseid. However, there was also a prophecy that Grail would one day cause great destruction with the knowledge putting her in danger shortly after she was born. With this knowledge putting her in danger shortly after she was born. Her mother Mirana gave birth to Grail at the same time that actually Princess Diana was born to Hippolyta. Together, Mirana and her newborn were two of the first Amazons to actually leave Themyscira. Eventually, the prophecy connected to Grail would come true, with her teaming up with the Anti-Monitor initially in an attempt to defeat her father, Darkseid. I think you can imagine that. That would be pretty destructive. Number 4. Moonstone Carla Sofin is Moonstone. She started out as a brilliant but evil psychiatrist who actually used her skills and knowledge to manipulate, get this, her own patients. That is definitely not good. That's some villain stuff right there. She became the protege of Dr. Faustus, continuing to develop her manipulative skills and her nature. Eventually, she managed to persuade the original Moonstone, Lloyd Bloch, into handing over the alien gem that gave him his powers. She used it to become a superpowered villain in her own right, and has often been known for her conflict with Carol Danvers, Miss Marvel, and then, of course, later, Captain Marvel, which came more to a head during her time on Norman Osborn's Dark Avengers team. Number 3. Umar Umar is the sister of the famous Dormammu, although sadly, I feel like not a lot of people talk about Umar. We all talk about Dormammu, but what about Umar? She's there too, she's super cool. Like her brother, she is also an extremely powerful being and hails from the Dark Dimension, although she too is a member of the Faltine, so they're actually not native to the Dark Dimension, but simply infiltrated it and then ended up uh, conquering it, with Dormammu becoming its ruler, but really only because the fight to actually win it and also trap the Mindless Ones had left Umar in a weak weakened state, so that's why her brother rules and not her. Umar and Dormammu are both members of the Faltine, a race of beings known to be extremely powerful energy based beings that are basically made up of pure magic. Doesn't get more magical than that. Number 2. Hela Hela is the daughter of Loki in the Marvel Universe, or at least in the comic book main continuity universe of Earth 616, although most people know her as Thor and Loki's secret sister in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But in the comics, this is actually not how she's connected to the family. Inherently, Hela mythologically was not necessarily, but her being a goddess of death basically is what makes her bad, at least in the comic book universe. Just her attachment to that part of the life cycle, as well as her connection to the underworld, as well as the fact that, you know, she's Loki's daughter. As a ruler of Hell, Hela is granted full immortality, even beyond what a normalized guardian would have, which, in case you didn't know, they're actually not technically immortal. Hela can also make almost anyone age rapidly, including people that are actually as guardians, or also render anyone immortal if she so chooses. She can take your life away or she can give you endless life. Number 1. Cersei Cersei is one of my all time favorite villains from the DC universe. She's an immensely powerful and ancient witch who often opposes the DC hero Wonder Woman. At one point in DC comics, Cersei was able to take within herself all the magical power and abilities of Hecate, or Hecate if you prefer, making her one of the most powerful magical 
political forces in the world after Hecate fell. Fortunately, the Justice League Dark were able to stop her, but for a moment there, and even after the conflict was resolved actually, she became pretty insanely powerful. I gotta say, I was like, I don't even know how they're gonna get out of this one, and then they somehow managed to do it. Number 10, Vampirella. Created in 1969, Vampirella is a sinister seductress and has always been a fan favorite and a very popular cosplay. Originally from the planet Draculon, she travels to Earth to hunt down the dark remnants of her own race. Earth's vampires originate from Dracula, who left his homeworld centuries ago and became corrupted by a demonic entity. Her origin has since been retconned and become more complicated, but that's the gist of it. A vampire-inspired superheroine taking down evil demons. She has some awesome powers, including super hearing, perfect night vision, and super senses, allowing her to discern someone's emotional state through their scent. She has a powerful healing factor and is immortal. She's hypnotic and seductive, a skilled hand-to-hand -hand fighter, and knows her way around firearms too. Number 9, Black Canary. First appearing in Flash Comics number 86 in 1947, Black Canary is a classic vigilante superhero who fights crime alongside Green Arrow, who she is usually romantically involved with. She has been a member of Birds of Prey and the Justice League, also known as Dina Drake or Dina Lance, depending on how confusing you find the DC Universe. Initially, she was portrayed as a hand-to-hand -hand fighter without superpowers who poses as a criminal to infiltrate gangs, but now she's a master martial artist proficient in a million fighting styles, reserving her signature move, the Canary Cry, for only the most powerful enemies. It's a super-powered sonic scream that shatters glass and can even kill. The origin of the Canary Cry power has been retconned many times, but originally it was a magical power received as a curse from a wizard later is explained to be a metahuman ability. As of the New 52, her ability is the result of human experimentation by the leaders of Team 7. She is an expert motorcyclist, gymnast, and tactician. And fun fact about Black Canary, in 2016, DC Comics released a three-track album called EP1 to promote her new story in which she becomes the lead singer of a band that shares her name. You know, like the Archies. Hey gang, before I hit number eight, I need you guys to hit that like button. Thanks so much guys, it really helps us out. Number eight, Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy is one of the most powerful women around when it comes to villains in the DC Universe. While she doesn't often act as a global threat, we learned in the Everyone Loves Ivy arc that if she wanted to, she could do that. Ivy in more recent years has flirted with a path of redemption, sometimes acting as a more morally conscious villain, and other times even acting as a hero or an anti-hero. In fact, even when she took over the world, she kind of had a pretty fair reason for why she should actually rule it. After all, things go a lot more smoothly and are a lot better overall for everyone, the planet especially included, when she is in charge. However, this also means that people don't really get to have free will, so that's that's not so great, obviously. Which is why people are like, look, Ivy, you can't just control the world. People gotta mess it up with their free will. Free will, you know? Number seven, Punchline. Also called Alexis K, she is the Joker's new right-hand woman, as Harley has a lot going on right now and the two aren't really on speaking terms. She was a student at Snyder College and encountered the Joker while on a field trip to a TV studio. Joker hijacked the studio and Alexis was forced at gunpoint to act as the newsreader, delivering Joker's message to the citizens of Gotham. After this encounter, she became obsessed starting a podcast about the Joker and poisoning the people around her to try and get his attention. She eventually kills her college dean, proving herself to the Joker, who taught her how to create a modified form of his Joker venom. Link in the script there. She goes on to help Joker in his war against Batman, eventually having an epic showdown against Harley Quinn and Batman. She wields a couple of daggers and holds her own well against Catwoman and Harley. Number 6. Silver Banshee First appearing in Action Comics number 595, Silver Banshee is a villain with sonic powers who frequently goes up against Superman. She was once insanely powerful, but has sort of been dumbed down a bit over the years. It's just how it goes with these supervillains sometimes. But in her youth, she was dragged into the netherworld during a supernatural conflict as family stuff and granted superpowers by a creature called the Crone. 
She is initially controlled by the powers like a curse, but later overcomes it with the help of Supergirl. They become fast friends and get to know each other pretty well. The two later hang out in a bar together and it's totally lit. They're having a great time until her dad, Black Banshee, shows up. Luckily, the two of them are able to defeat Black Banshee together. Silver Banshee is known for her ability to learn language instantly and more importantly, this crazy power to just like make people die by saying their name. It's sort of like the Black Canary's Canary Cry except the Banshee version and it instantly kills you. Number 5. Blackfire. Blackfire is the older sister of Starfire from the Teen Titans. She often appears as an adversary of the Titans and is extremely powerful, outmatching the already astounding Starfire in battle. She can absorb ultraviolet radiation and transform it into deadly bolts she calls Black Bolts, and can even change radiation into energy, giving her superhuman strength and endurance. She is especially powerful, capable of interstellar travel and flight in space. It's kind of the same thing. She appears in Red Hood and the Outlaws number 11, where she fights alongside her sister and takes down the Blight after they capture Roy Harper. It's an epic team up and a great reunion for the two sisters. Number four, Mary, Queen of Blood. Mary Seward is the Queen of Blood, appearing in House of Mystery number 290 in 1981. She once had a lover named Andrew Bennett, a decorated nobleman who was bitten and turned into a vampire. Mary begged Andrew to bite her as well, hoping that the two could spend eternity together. However, Andrew resists the vampiric bloodlust while Mary embraces it and becomes a ruthless killer. She forms a cult called the Blood Red Moon and Andrew hunts her across the centuries trying to stop her. She once turned an entire temple of monks into vampires, but they rather impressively resist the bloodlust through mindfulness and meditation. She has a crazy host of powerful abilities, including psychokinesis, transformation, regeneration, superhuman strength, not to mention immortality. As long as she has a steady supply of blood, she is extremely powerful, and I'm sure it's easy for her to get more. Number three, Killer Frost. Killer Frost is just a classic deadly female villain, an icy-hearted femme fatale who will literally suck the life out of you in a heartless attack. There have been multiple iterations of Frost, always iconic and always super powerful, having once even sold her soul to become more powerful. She has been kidnapped and forced to work on the Suicide Squad and once even worked alongside Batman. Caitlin Snow is the newest Frost, a scientist who is tricked by Hive and made to die in a staged accident, but she instead survives and gains her ice-based powers. She is not made of ice, but instead generates organic ice-like cells that make up her entire genetic makeup. She is a heat vampire, absorbing the body heat of others to kill them. Number two, Enchantress. Also known as June Moon, Enchantress gained her powers from an immensely powerful being and almost immediately winds up battling against Supergirl. She later joins the Suicide Squad as Amanda Waller agrees to help her control her evil Enchantress side. She can manipulate energy, heal, and even teleport. She once took on Wonder Woman, Cyborg, and Superman all at once and has defeated other villains as well. Her powers have gotten kind of erratic and unpredictable since June Moon and Enchantress became separated from one another, but she has still demonstrated some impressive raw power in her villainous career. She is capable of flight, necromancy, and possession, elemental control, and even resurrection, but only if the corpse is fresh. If it's not though, she can always use the necromancy. Number one, Evil Supergirl. Lex Luthor had an evil scheme that basically caused all of this. He created a black kryptonite energy ray, which he used on Supergirl, hoping to corrupt her. Instead though, the ray generated a second, dark version of Supergirl. This dark version had similar memories and experiences, but believed that she was sent to Earth to kill Superman. And as you can imagine, she's crazy powerful. She goes on a rampage using her Kryptonian powers, causing tons of damage, and even taking down Black Canary and The Flash before finally facing off in an epic battle with Superman and Wonder Woman. Evil Supergirl is likely one of the most powerful villains ever, and it's actually Wonder Woman that brings her down in the end, catching both versions of Supergirl in her lasso and merging them together back into one. Number 10, Lady Spider. Lady Spider is an alternate version of Spider-Man who hails from the Earth of 803. She was first introduced in Spider-Verse issue number one from 2014. Earth 803 is similar to our own history's turn of the century or Victorian period, 
Limited. Here, May Riley, aka Lady Spider, was the daughter of an accomplished inventor with a passion for various animals and insects. After her father's death, May decided to become a hero and created for herself a mechanical suit and web shooters, taking up the mantle of Lady Spider. She does not have any powers, but is considered to be a spider totem and is able to fight against villains on her earth using her suit and her equipment. I also just love her overall look, it's so cool. Number 9, Spider Bite. Spider Bite comes to us from a Vault of Spiders issue number 1 from 2018. Her real name is Margo and she takes up the hero persona of Spider Bite in secret while immersed in cyberspace, a virtual reality world that humans, I assume in the future, frequent on a regular basis. It's like the internet, but if you could walk around in it and actually, you know, like tap into it, experiencing it with a virtual avatar that is meant to represent you as opposed to just surfing it on your computer. It kind of reminds me of that episode of Adventure Time where they find that island full of people who are basically fed through tubes and plugged into a virtual reality matrix like world where they live out their day to day through virtual avatars that they can customize. I don't know if you've seen that episode, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty trippy. We haven't seen much of Spider Bite yet in the comics, with her only appearing in two issues, but I really do hope we get to see more of her and her alternate futuristic world of Earth 22191. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list as much as I am loving giving it to you, please be sure to show us that love by giving this video a thumbs up. We also have a really awesome Spider Man playlist, so if you have a hankering for Spider Mans or Spider Ladies, be sure to check that out. Spider folks. Spider totems. Number 8, Spider Girl. Anya Corazon got her powers through a spider tattoo after she was considered a powerful potential candidate for the Spider Society by one of their sorcerers, Miguel. The Spider Society is a secret society that has existed since 1099 AD. They worship and often seek to protect spider totems, those who are fated to become super powered spider like beings. That's what a spider totem is. Ezekiel Sims also belongs to the Spider Society, for example. Miguel believed that Anya had what it took to become one of their hunters, warriors who fought against the Sisterhood of the Wasp. Anya ended up getting caught in the midst of a fight looking to protect a stranger who happened to be the sorcerer Miguel. To save her life and seeing her potential, he transferred some of his power to her, giving her that spider tattoo as well as spider like powers along with it. Number 7. Yelena Belova. Yelena Belova has always been the rival to Black Widow since way back when she was training in the Red Room Academy. She always aimed to be the best of the best and was driven crazy by her obsession to become the best operative out there. Belova at one point had her face swapped with Natasha's against her will so that Nat could prove a point to her basically that being a spy wasn't that great. To help convince her to come over to the good side of things, sort of. Belova will likely play a much less villainous role in the MCU, but in comics, she has often been known as an antagonist to Black Widow. And she also has been Black Widow before. Although she is usually manipulated into being a villain, and the most evil thing about her is generally her competitiveness with Natasha, which we've already seen will be addressed in the Black Widow film, just based on the trailer. Belova has also acted as an ally to Natasha on occasion as well, despite the fact that she has lots of reasons to hate her. So yeah, it depends on what you're reading. She can be a villain, she can sort of be a, not really a hero, but a, an ally. She can be a hero in her own way. Number 6, Lady Bullseye. Maki Matsumoto is known for being one of the fastest fighters around. She is both believed to be faster than the Kingpin and Bullseye, who inspired her to become a killer under the same mantle. And Bullseye, who in fact inspired her to become a killer under that same mantle. She was saved by Bullseye when she was a little girl, who the Yakuza intended to sell for their own means. Bullseye, however, was tasked with wiping out those who would be responsible for her and many other victims' sale and killed them before they could do so. Lady Bullseye is a skilled fighter, trained in wielding many different types of weapons, and proficient in many different kinds of martial arts. Oh, she also is apparently a lawyer, or at least understands law well enough to pose as one. She's both worked with Kingpin and successfully defeated him in combat, which I think is pretty impressive. Kingpin is not an easy person to defeat in a fight. Number 5, Titania. Titania is Mary McFerrin, a girl who was known for her small stature and often mocked for it when she was young and aspired to become something greater than what she felt she was born into. After being offered powers by supervillain Doctor Doom, she was transformed into the powerhouse known as 
Titania. Titania has been shown to be skilled and strong enough to defeat a whole wheelhouse of powerful superheroes, including Luke Cage and Iron Fist, as well as The Thing and Mr. Fantastic. She's also kicked the butt of Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, is faster than a speeding bullet and Mjolnir itself, and can take a direct hit from the mythical hammer and be left completely unfazed by it. Now, some of this went on while her powers were boosted, admittedly, but either way, Titania is not a villain you'd want to face in a fist fight. I would not want to face her in a fist fight because my my face would get punched into the next, like, into the nega zone. I'd be gone. You'd have no face left. Yikes. Number four, Madame Hydra. Madame Hydra has close ties to quite a few superheroes and other famous villains. And we also, for a time, have known her under the code name Viper, which is also very important indeed, given her obsession with snake venom, in addition to other toxins and poisons. Madame Hydra's legal name is Ophelia Sarkinson, and like her code name implies, she is often known for being being a ruler of Hydra and as a member of their high council. She has close ties to Jessica Drew's Spider Woman, who she has fought against and also sought to re recruit. Wolverine, whom she was married to, and obviously Captain America, because. Hydra, so yeah. As I said, Madame Hydra is fond of poisons, toxins, and venoms, and as such, generally employs them for use as weapons through projectiles and even her lipstick. She also possesses near toxin immunity, which she obtained through frequent and carefully measured exposure. I wish that was true. What if you had an, actually, isn't that kind of how allergies work? Can you be like exposed to them in like small amounts and then you can overcome your allergy? I don't know if that's true, but that might be true. It might be science. Don't try that. If you're allergic to something and like you die, don't do it though, because I think then it doesn't work. <laughs> Number three, Moonstone. Like many of the deadliest and most villainous women in Marvel, Moonstone is really just a woman looking to put herself before others. She's always out to get what she needs first, which generally makes her a villain. But there have been times when Carla Sofin has both posed as a hero and also truly tried to be a hero. She was part of Baron Zemo's Thunderbolts, built out of his Masters of Evil team, and rebranded in disguised as superheroes, following the apparent destruction of most of Earth's heroes by Onslaught. Following this, the Thunderbolts did attempt to truly become heroes under the leadership of Hawkeye, whom Carla started a relationship with. Moonstone was also the Miss Marvel equivalent to Norman Osborn's Dark Avengers team, acting far more villainously once more. She can manipulate gravity, making her super powerful and allowing her to basically augment much of her own abilities, including durability, strength, and speed. She can even turn herself invisible using her gravity manipulation, and she can teleport. Number two, Mystique. One of the deadliest women out there when it comes to female villains has got to be my girl, Mystique. The best thing about Mystique, too, is she's really a relatable villain because a lot of times she's kind of just looking out for number one, herself. Wow, did I just say she's relatable and then I talked about how selfish she was? I guess I think people are all selfish to an extent, which is true. I think we are all selfish at times. And sometimes Mystique also just behaves evilly to look out for those she legitimately cares for, like her now dead wife Destiny and their adopted daughter Rogue, whether or not Rogue actually wants her help or protection. And so that is definitely relatable, I think. Looking out for other people, even sometimes when people are like, I don't want your help, and you're like, well, I'm still gonna help you because I love you. Her shape-shifting powers means that she can pose as pretty much anyone, and her skills in disguise and impersonation help to smooth over these appearances, allowing her to even move and act like those whom she adopts the identity of. Not only that, but Mystique is a skillful fighter and manipulator, so she's not someone you want to get on the bad side of. Trust me, other people have, and they have been backstabbed so many times, their back is basically like a knife block at this point. Yikes. Number one, Hela. Hela is one of the most deadly villains when she wants to be. Like Mystique, Hela isn't always a villain. She's not inherently evil, but is capable of great evil if it is something that is needed for her to get what she needs or wants. As the ruler of Hell, she is immensely powerful when it comes to her magic and her physical strength as well. She's also a necromancer, being ruler of Hell, though she isn't someone who enjoys torturing the souls over which she rules or manipulating them into doing her bidding. Unless, once again, it serves some greater purpose for her. Still, Hela is not someone you want to get on the bad side of, and more recently, as we've seen her ally herself with Thanos, we've seen an even more malevolent side of her. So many deadly women and women who even rule over the dead.